I still gotta get this out of my way here. Move that there. Put that there. Click the button here. And there we go. Oh yeah, Noodle. Bo looks pretty cute. You did a good job, love. I don't know why I'm going into the options. We played the game before, and we know there's no options we need to change. Memory card slot one. We're roughly halfway through the game. As such, I am going to try and beat the game today, but we'll see. I've never played it to completion before. I've never played past like where we're currently at, so I have no idea um, where like everything is or anything like that, and there are a bunch of winding paths. I did see one little... What do you want to call it? Spoiler? Easter egg? Not Easter egg. Spoiler, I guess. So I want to go to... I guess it's this one. And then... I want to go back to the lighthouse, basically, that we're at. Because now that we have the ground pound ability, apparently there's, like, underground areas that we can... That we can go to that I didn't know about. I don't know how to turn into a... There we go. Not turn into it, but to, to ground pound. So I think it's like up the road here. You hear about you're playing Animal Crossing? Yeah, I figured. Love. <laughs> you're good. Enjoy Animal Crossing. Nate being electrocuted by a dryer is no fun? You don't say, man. It sounds pretty fun to me. I, <laughs> I myself love being electrocuted by dryers. Was it a 220 or two, 240 volt? Or was it a, a 120 volt? The words don't work too well. Anyways, regardless, it's no fun. I've never been shocked with 220, 240, whatever you want to consider it. Because isn't it like it's technically 240, but like most, or at least back in the day, you usually got like 10 volts less on 110. So then you add the two 110 lines together and that makes it 220. And that's why everybody calls it 220. But it's technically 240, isn't it? Doesn't America run on a 120 volt system? 120 versus 110. USA. Now I'm just curious. Yeah. 120 volt level is commonly referred to as 110 or other things, but we technically run on a 120 volt system. Well, t actually, it's a 240 volt system split phase, so then you get two 120s per, per like, incoming line or whatever for residential. So we're on a 240 volt system. People just have weird names for things for some reason. That's what I thought. But anyways, that's besides the point. None of that actually matters. But you were shocked by the 240? That sucks, my guy. <laughs> you got a migraine yet? That's, uh, like I said, I've never been shocked with 240, but I've been shocked with 120, and uh, that's what happened to me. I just ended up getting a massive migraine for like 24 hours, and it was not, not a good time at all. Would not recommend. I can't imagine that uh, 240 is any better. Is this gonna like go over there or is it telling me to jump over there? Or do we get like another ability? You know what? Fuck it. I'm okay with dying. <laughs> okay, that's that is what happens. We just die. Okay. Maybe we get some sort of ability here or something that changes things. But that's the that's the spoiler I saw. That right there. Like coming down into here. By breaking through the, the floorboards there. Which I'm really glad I accidentally saw that, because again, otherwise I would have never known that we could stomp through that. I didn't see the game mention that anywhere. If they do, I completely missed it. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Dicks. Mainly muscle issues. Feel like you got your ass kicked. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. Hey, at least you're alive though, right? It didn't mess with your heart or anything. That's the important bit. Wait, do they all split? Like, was this one here gonna split too? No. So that just like happened out of nowhere. Or maybe... Oh, God. Oh, I hate this game so much. <laughs> maybe it did split and we just didn't see it because we weren't over there. Oh, we can get that, right? Yeah. Now I'm worried, like, all of these are going to split, man. Yeah, I guess that one did too, huh? Oh, no. No, 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 no. We got to go. We got to go. Okay. Yeah, you really don't have much time on that. Thankfully, you weren't touching with both hands. Yeah. Was it bad enough to where, like, you couldn't let go? Or what were you doing, even? Were you, like, installing a dryer? Or 
were you plugging one in and just accidentally touched it when you shouldn't have been? Like, what the hell happened, my guy? Like, when I was shocked with 120, I fully admit it was my own dumbass. I, uh... Was trying to get my toast out of the toaster. <laughs> and I was like, I'll just use a knife. I've done it a million times before. Never had a problem. And, uh, well, I accidentally touched the side a little bit. And, yeah. Was not a fun time. Needless to say. Oh. That's how you get that to go over. So wait, what's this up here then? Do we need to go down there first? Load up this pipe for a one-way shortcut to the car courtyard outside the mystery mansion. Well, I feel like we should probably go down here first, right? Where does this go? Sure, whatever. And then presumably it comes back out the same way and then we can... Wait, creepy crawlies in the hallways? Maybe not. Where are we, dude? I'm so lost. Map. Super secret lab? Oh god, we're like... Oh my god, this map is very confusing to me. Okay, I'm sure it's fine. Who are you? I don't remember that guy. Ever running across him before. Do we have to deal with him, or can we just... I mean, if he's just gonna ignore us, I'll just ignore him. That's fine. So we can raise the gate like that. He's really not going to do anything. He's just going to chill up there. Presumably we can come through that way somehow. Oh, oh God. Is there a way to, to know what's like safe and what's not? No. Nope. Okay. Dude, get that Scooby snack, dumbass. Hooked it all up and went to move the dryer some and touched by the cord. Turns out one of the cords on the inside was not bolted down. So be oh, nice, man. So was it not properly grounded, the casing? Because, like, that should have instantly flipped a breaker, right? Because the, the shell of the dryer should have been... Should have been grounded. That way, if that exact sort of thing happens, if there's any power going to it, it just goes to ground, which should trip the breaker, and then, hey, you're fine, right? That sounds like a, a grounding problem. You either with the dryer itself or with the, uh, <laughs> or with the outlet. Granted, I am by no means an electrician, so I don't know. That's how I always understood them to work, at least. Right. It's a headless What'd I say? Um, shouldn't, shouldn't that have, like, if the, the shell for the dryer is properly grounded, shouldn't that have flipped the breaker? So is the outlet properly grounded, or the... The, the... Oh, hi. Or the shell for the dryer? Like, so I'm not an electrician, so, like, I, I know nothing. I'm just... That's how, like, all of my dryer is, for instance, and, like, my, uh... Whatchamacallit? Dishwasher. My dishwasher and all that. Although, granted, my dishwasher does leak some power from the shell, so, like... And that's even with it being properly grounded, so who knows, man. Thanks for freeing me, pal. Now help me get the key in the main corridor so we can get out of here. Wait, so am I throwing him this time? Okay. Oh. <laughs> be nice if he, like, followed me or something. Can I still fight with while holding Shaggy? No. But I guess I'm gonna have to, like, leave Shaggy here and then kill this dude. And then I can get the key and crap. That seems about right. Hey, let's go. And then you Rummy. definitely want the sandwich. 
So we're not really throwing him like straight up in there. We're kind of throwing him at, at an angle. Entrance to the professor's super secret laboratory at the end of this corridor. Looks like it's too high to toss me out to. Come back when you find a way to get up there. Okay. So this is somewhere we need to go later. We need like a super jump or something. Way to the super secret lab, Scoob. Is that like end game? Sounds like it would be end game. A super secret lab and all that. I sent a message on Discord. Wait, so you just touch like the bare wire hanging out the back or that panel? Because again, as far as I understand, like the whole dryer, washing machine, whatever dryer, I believe this is, right? The whole dryer should be grounded. That way, like if a loose wire does touch the bare metal there, it's still grounded. Right. It's a headless specter. How am I supposed to get through these things, man? You get stunned? No, you die. Okay. Right. Oh my god, I suck at this. There we go. We made it through one at least. Take the wins where I can get them. There's another key. I have no idea if I'm going the right way or not, by the way. I just knew that I could go this way. And that there is an item around here somewhere that we need. Like, this led to one of the items. But I don't know which path we need to take or anything like that. Basically, a YouTube video popped up. And I just kind of, like, browsed through it real quick because I was curious. It's a warp day. What is... That's soap? I think that's soap. Hey, Professor's Plunger Invention, let's go. Now you have suction cups to walk up steep slopes without slipping. Hey, I mean, that seems handy eventually, but I don't think that helps me here, right? Because, yeah, it looks like we need to get them keys. I don't think the suction cup is going to help me at all with that. So, yeah, I guess we just leave now, go back the way we came. Touch the side of the dryer in that area. See, some, I don't know, that just seems sketch to me. That that would give you a zap, but... But again, not electrician, man, I don't know. Don't take my word for it at all. Just, I know absolutely nothing. Mm -mm. Regardless of whether we beat the game tonight or not... We are going to go ahead and roll for the uh, next game to beat at the end of the day today. Because I want to have it ready for next week. Because if we don't beat it today, then we're definitely going to be beating it next week. There's no way there's enough game left to have like two more weeks of playtime. And depending on what the game is, it could take me a few minutes to find it. Because I might have to dig deep in my boxes of of games there. Yeah, we're going to figure out what the hell we're playing exactly today. And okay, now this path over here we couldn't go down, right? Yeah, no. We just need to go back, back. We know for sure is it shot through you? You were surprised it shocked me where you were touching? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, something about that doesn't sound right, you know? Like, like I said, I mean, my dishwasher and actually my washer both have kind of the same issue. Although, I'm not positive where my washer's plugged in at, that it's properly grounded at all. The little grounding tester that I have says it is. But, I don't know, there could be very well be some way to defeat those things. And, uh... But where the dishwasher's plugged in, like, the charger for my electric car is super picky about things being grounded before it'll start charging. And, like, it works fine with that one. With the one where my dishwasher's plugged in at. Because I just have, like, a little countertop dishwasher thing. So, like, I think that one's properly grounded. But it'll give you a little shock, too. So, I don't know, man. Maybe it's normal for it to leak a little bit of... Voltage. Where are we? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the washer isn't properly grounded, either. To be honest with you. Like I said, our, uh... 
our dishwasher does it too, just not as badly. Oh god. But it does give you a little zap if you touch like the inside of the dishwasher and then touch like the the actual sink that it's next to or something, it will gladly give you a little zap. Okay, so we can't come this way yet either. I haven't actually had the washer shock me in quite a while, Noodle. I remember when we first got it, it used to do it all the time, but nowadays, yeah, it's almost never that it does it. It's also like you have to touch the bare metal and not the uh, not the painted bits. And of course, the dishwasher only really shocks you whenever you touch the inside, because that's the only part that's not painted. And the uh, the washer is painted completely on the outside, except for a couple places, because we got the washer secondhand, so a couple places where like it's worn down over the years. But most of the time, you're not really touching the bare metal, so I think that's probably what helps save us from getting shocked as often on both of them. But again, I don't really know what I'm talking about, so... Yeah, honestly, same, man. That's one of the reasons why I want to build my own house eventually. Like, you know, dream scenario if I ever hit the lottery or something. Definitely building my own house, and that's one of the reasons why. I want to just have, like, all of the electric done properly and up to, like, standard code. With higher amperage service, because, like, the house I'm on right now is 15 amp service to every outlet. Um, but the layout in the breaker box is incredibly stupid like multiple rooms are hooked together But it's only like certain walls of multiple rooms like one wall of room yeah. One wall of one room will be on one circuit the other wall of the room will be on the other and then two or three rooms Might share the same circuit for that one wall The kitchen has like three different circuits, but on different like uh, just in a layout that makes no sense though like <laughs> So, like, the whole thing's just really weird. I just want to completely redo it all, but... Someday, you know, for the future. If I get rich or hit the lottery somehow. Not to mention, like, I want to have full... Uh, Ethernet, preferably fiber, going through my walls. And then just terminate it with, uh, whatchamacallit? I can't remember what it's called. Basically, you put a fiber cable into it, and then <laughs> it puts out regular Ethernet on the other side. It's like a switch, but it also converts between the two. My brain doesn't work very well. Uh, but anyways, preferably fiber just for the extra, like, future-proofing. But even if it was just standard, like, Cat 6 or something through the house, that would be better than what I have now, which is, you know, nothing. I can't go through this door. Sweet. So what's this area for then? Is there absolutely nothing here? The shock or doesn't, okay. It doesn't shock me as much if I'm standing on the metal strip and I lean on the wash and I feel a little bit on my tummy. Yeah. That's whenever I like used to be able to feel it all the time, but like I said, nowadays it doesn't really shock that much, I feel like. I don't know what changed. Oh, okay. Well, apparently we found the right way to go. I was literally just like, just blind jumping, hoping not to die, but it worked. Have we gone up this way before? Oh, we couldn't go up this way before because it was slippery. But now we can. Look at us go. Maybe this is the right direction then. Is this just a collect stuff section? Like, is there anything actually here? No, it doesn't look like it. Your dad fixed it so it was better, but ground line in general isn't hooked up right, he said. Yeah. Didn't he just, like, fake it? Didn't he just wire ground in neutral? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he did, but... Very well could be wrong, though. I have no idea. That was a long time ago. I think this was just like a bonus area. I don't think we had to come up here at all.
You want that in labeled conduit ran for electric? It's nice and easy to replace wire or add or anything. My idea is, is that like if it's set up properly, you shouldn't really need to add new conduit later, right? But like obviously if you are doing it from scratch, having everything labeled and whatnot would definitely be nice. And having cool lines in general, in case you do need to run some new line, because you never know, you know, something could come out that, like maybe a, a new form of ethernet that just blows everything else out of the water comes along. So having a couple pool lines in there, that way whenever you do decide to add a new line, you can easily get it to go through all the runs. Something like that would definitely be nice. Oh, we don't need to save again. Nope, we're dead. Okay. Someday. Stretch goals. I don't remember this map, like, at all, man. Okay, so we've explored... ...all of the fishing village, it looks like. At least according to this map. I would have thought we would have come across another boss by now, though. Can we go this way? Wreck on the deck? No, that's the one that we need. We need, like, the flying ability or whatever for. We can go back to... Where's, like, the... Hold on. Go back to the mystery machine. Hedge maze, here we go. I know there's at least one or two places here in the hedge mage that we haven't gone to. Wait, why can't I fast travel to any of these points? Okay, go back to the mystery. Oh, I'm on the map, I'm not a fast travel point. That's why, <laughs> that's why I can't fast travel anywhere. Okay. That's no, you meant to add wire or whatever that you can just run it through. Oh, through the conduit pipe. Not have to fish or put a hole in a wall or such. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. I got gotcha. you. That would be nice then. <laughs> yeah. Having the the predetermined paths with the conduit pipe. That's what I meant by like the, the pool line too. Right? Having the pool line. Oh good, Twitch is dying. You probably can't hear me right now. I just <laughs> I just noticed that yeah. We have no connection right now, so that's awesome. Oh boy. Gotta love Twitch sometimes, you know? So, like, we can break through this, right? Ah, I was wondering how we got down to this section. Again, this looks like another just get extra Scooby Snacks section, so I'm not sure... Not sure it's really important. It's probably gonna cost us more, um... More health, more lives, whatever, than we're gonna get from it, but whatever. It's fine. Was it that one, or was it over here? It was over here. So it does come back. We need the sandwiches. We're gonna need it. Wait, can we come backwards? No. Do this again. Oh! We can also, like, break things above us if we, like, ground pound into a trampoline. Very fancy. Okay. Guess I should double check, make sure it's not my internet, but I don't think it is, man. It's almost never my internet. Go. Download speeds are, I mean, more than fast enough, but I can't skip that test, so. Come on. I'm pretty sure it's not us, though. I'm pretty sure it's Twitch again. Yeah, yeah, my my <laughs> my upload speed is more than fast enough for it, so like eight times faster than what I actually need. It's just Twitch. Sadly. Wasn't an exit? No, okay. We need to go this away. Right. 
I just want to drop cake or anything? Anything tasty? No? Okay. Well, oh god. I thought for sure we were dead. I don't remember where we're going. If I could just find a fast travel point even, we could fast travel back to the to the van, to the mystery machine, but... Oh, okay. We, like, skipped it because of how we went underneath. That's why we were so backwards, so lost. I see, I see. I wish OBS would let us change our... Whatchamacallit, midstream. Our, uh... Discord server, or Discord server, or Twitch server, but it doesn't. Wait, I hit the button and then this opened up. Haven't we been in here before? Yeah, this is where we just came from. What did hitting that button actually do for us? When it appears to be stuck, come back after you find an that will let you bash it. I mean, I bashed it. Huh. Another entrance to creepy crawlies in the hallways. Oh. Wait, what? It just brought us back to here. Well, shoot, I don't want to be here. <laughs> um. Okay. That's a door. Ah, we missed a door last time, though. Maybe this will be useful somehow? Maybe? Probably not, but... Worth a try? Absolutely not. Okay, well... <laughs> Damn it, game! I just want to go back to the hedge maze. Instead, we got teleported back to where we started the day at. <laughs> That's fine. I'm sure there's a fast travel point we passed somewhere back here. Yeah, right here. Perfect. Okay. Hedge maze. No, I, I guess we might as well start the hedge maze from the beginning again. Because I cannot remember where the different paths that we couldn't take before were. So by going through it from the beginning, maybe we'll see some some useful bits. This takes us up to like the top of that mountain or whatever. That's like another teleport. I'd rather go through it the normal way. We can catch any places that we've missed before. Kind of forgot about the lampshade, to be honest. That one seems kind of pointless. Nothing in here. There was probably like a sandwich or something in there at one point. Something more or less useless. That's just a witch up there. Remember that. I know there was at least one. I believe two. Of like the steep slopes that we couldn't go up. And then. Yeah, here's one of them. There was, uh, I think, one of the, the sections where you need to bash the ground or whatever to get through. Bro, can I even make that jump, though? Maybe we need to, like... Oh, wait, there's a run button, right? Yeah, I don't know if the run button actually lets us jump any farther or not. No, it doesn't. <laughs> How do we... What? Is there something we can grab? Something that I'm missing? Run. 
I don't know, man. I don't think it's possible. Is there an invention that lets us jump farther? Is that a thing? Yeah, no, I don't I don't think we can do that. Okay. Well, we'll go this way then. Uh, there's still the whole thing with the witches brew things that I don't understand. I think has something to do with soap. And there's definitely the cave still, wherever the hell that's at. The, where we go down and then we bash or whatever. Does this not look like a fake wall? Bro, it definitely is, but we can't jump over it, right? No. Or bash it. Hmm. God, I kind of forgot about all the plants. Oh, there's another section here. Gonna be another jump that we can't make? No, we can make this one. Just barely, but we can make it. Oh god. Okay. I didn't think we were gonna be able to make it up there if we fell down. Oh man. Don't die, Scoot. Is this a sandwich? Yes, thank God. Give us a little bit of leeway. Wait, have... We've been here before, right? Yeah, I think this just took us in like some sort of shortcut or circle or something. The problem is I can't remember where exactly that other part was. Okay, yeah, so it's just another way through there. Useless, sadly. Well, there's two ramps down. Hopefully the, the cave section actually takes us somewhere new. I was kind of hoping to be at, like, the second boss by now. I don't know how many bosses there are in the game. But we did one around 25% through, and we're now about halfway through, so I was hoping for, like, second boss, you know? Some sign of progress, but no go. Is this... What was the buried treasure? I didn't see anything pop up. It appears to open from the other side. Have we opened it already? No. I think the, the cliffs might be the area that we're trying to get to, though. So maybe... We're getting close. Right. Oh, this is new, too. Oh, God, that's a pit. <laughs> I thought it was just, you know, normal ground. Oh, this is rude. Oh god, it keeps coming too, okay. Oh shit, that's a hole. <laughs> Can we, like, go past it now that it's gone? No, it just respawns, okay. I was thinking maybe that would open up a new path or something, but... No, the game's not that nice. in the hedge part four very fancy uh oh that's shaggy can we not walk this way no oh, i'm kind of like stuck in a really weird spot there we go i jump there's nothing here to jump though shaggy
He waits for us, doesn't he? Like if we just take too long. Yeah. That's nice of him. Villager just confirmed you're not an adult. Well, we we knew that already, love. But you act like a child at least. What'd your villager say to you though? That the first time she realized she was an adult when she drank black coffee and liked it. Oof. Oof. I don't think you have to like black coffee to be an adult. The ability to tolerate it, maybe. <laughs> but like... Oh, we're alive. <laughs> I don't think... I'm not a big fan of black coffee or anything, but I don't think it's like the worst thing in the world. According to Peanut, you do? Well, Peanut is the expert of all things... Period, so I mean, fair enough. If Peanut says you have to like it, then I guess you have to like it. Come on, Scoob. Let's get going. This all war takes out of control, pal. I'll be back at the start. Wahoo! I didn't think it was through the greenhouse where we were trying to go, but I guess it must be. It's definitely not in the greenhouse section, right? I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My chair is going to kill me one of these days, man. In theory, the adjustable armrests are nice, but since I use that to lift myself up while I put my legs under me, like, I'm always just... They just randomly go out and they just make me drop and I'm going to die one of these days. <laughs> I'm just going to plop down on the chair with my full weight, and it's just going to smash. I think it was just a witch down here, right? Nothing handy. I guess there's a sandwich, but we don't need the sandwich right now. Surprisingly. Especially right now for me, man. Noodle and I went out for lunch. I had a grilled chicken sandwich and a salad. Oh, and then we had a bit of a, what was it, cheesy bread for an appetizer, too. And then she wanted to get some coffee, so I got a donut from the coffee shop. And honestly, it was really good. But I am stuffed now after all of that. Wait, is this new? Or did we already have the head bashing when we came through here before? Now, this looks new. I don't know which way we were supposed to go, but... Oh, God. I didn't think we had to land on this thing because of how the first one was set up, but... Forgot your bits? Oh, my God. I'm sorry you forgot your bits, love. At least it's just in the kitchen. It's not that far away. Two little steps, you got this. Or, well, more like a couple really big steps. Oh, you can't hear me now because Twitch died again. Well, I tried. <laughs> I did my best. Oh, is that just another shortcut? I feel like that's just another shortcut. Hopefully it didn't make us miss anything important. Wait, which way are we trying to Oh, man, I'm so lost. <laughs> this game confuses the hell out of me. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it was a shortcut past there. Which, honestly, I feel like it was a harder section than the section we ended up, or that we would normally go through. So I don't really know if it's a, a good shortcut, but it's a shortcut. An alternate path. There we go. That's what to call it. Oh, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Can we jump on the bats? I don't know if we've ever tried. 
tempted, but we're so low on health that it seems like a bad time to try it. That sandwich, please and thank. It would help if I could remember, like, where we need to go, because then we could just warp back to it, but I don't, not even a little bit, so we're, like, completely lost. My god, dude, Twitch, why are you doing this, man? Yeah, no, there was nothing up there, it was just the, the diggy spot, the sandwich, and the zombie. And apparently instant death pits. I, I remember this section, I definitely do. Because of these stupid infant, infant death, <laughs> instant death pits. It's like if you jump too high, man, you die. So I think we just need to make normal jumps. But instinctively, I always want to. I always want to double jump. You know, get the extra height, the extra safety of it. Oh man, I saw the sandwich and was like, oh, I'll grab that. Soapbox will replenish your soap bubbles when you find that invention. Where? Why is it telling us that here? There's no... As far as I can tell, there's no soapbox around there. Ow. We've got to be getting close, man. There's not that much left to the haunted maze, right? That feels jumpable. Did I say that last time we came through here? I think I did. But it does. That feels so jumpable. It's not. I wonder if there's like a triple jump or something. There's got to be like a triple jump or a glide or some sort of ability that we can get later. Was it this? No, it wasn't this. Or no, it was this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. This is the section I've been looking for. Down here, there's a, a crush thingy. Presumably to open this gate. Yeah, there we go. Scared stiff at Skull Cliff. Finally, a new section. Okay. We're just trying to get to the bottom, right? Maybe hitting some switches as we go, as we go through. this a shortcut or is this just going to get me more lost Ruby sacks. something something coming for over here or we okay we can go down Your dick, Mr. Oh god. I don't remember what you called. Why are you in my way? Move! Oh. I presume we needed that open to be able to get through here. Okay, okay. I see. No cake. Very rude of you, sir. Not give me cake. Is that just a sandwich? Yeah, I think so. 
think it, I think we can safely avoid it. Ignore it, whatever. Or really avoid it. Now that we got that moving down there, we go back this way. And then... Hopefully there's something at the bottom that's at least somewhat useful. A new invention, a boss fight. I'll take anything, really, game. As long as it's not just more Scooby Snacks, I'm happy. Oh my god. I didn't know it was just gonna fall to our death there, man. It showed, like, a drop trail, so I was like, oh, it must be safe to drop here. There's a platform just off screen or something. Nope. It's death. That's what it is. Oh no, did it reload the switches? Bruh. Guess we'll check this way then. There's absolutely nothing over here. Garbage. So this gives us another chance to catch the Scooby Snacks that we missed. I'm sure we're going to come up on another door sooner or later that we need to open. Very kind of you to give me cake, sir. So I have these annoying dudes to worry about, though. Thank you. Why is this game being so nice, man? It's giving us cake like every time we get hit. It was weird. This game's not supposed to be nice, it's supposed to be rude. back over and this time don't fall to our death so we don't have to redo it all again no warp point I mean presumably we got a checkpoint whenever we came in, so that's something, yeah. That's another jump that, like, we can't make that's just too far, which reaffirms my belief that there's got to be some sort of triple jump or long jump ability or, or something that we're going to unlock here at some point. What is that up there? Oh, is that just a light? I thought it was like something we could collect. That was dumb. That was dumb. I'm alive. It's fine. I was half expecting to get to the end of it here and then there'd be a door that we needed the Scooby Snacks to open and not have enough. We need 650 of them or something. It seems to go up by roughly 50 every time. I think the last one was, it was either 500 or 550. So we're close to enough for the next door, assuming it keeps following the same pattern. Hopefully we'll be okay. Like pound, do we go higher? No. I mean, it seems like we need to go down here, but is that a floaty area? I have no idea if we were supposed to be able to make that jump or not. That was so close. What are you moving for us? Oh, no, I don't think we were meant to make that jump. 
I think we got super lucky with the the ground pound giving us like extra jump length because it kind of pauses us in the air a little bit. Can we ground pound you dudes? We can. I don't think that's necessarily better than the just hitting with our head. Skull bash. I guess it's handy for these dudes that like walk around platforms. They oftentimes get in the way. What did that activate? Oh, well, the second jump is just another way up to there. So if we can make this jump, even if it is like cheese, <laughs> and then make it back. Oh, no, we were on it, man. I'm going to try one more time. If it still doesn't work, then I'm going to accept that it's probably just cheese and not do it again. I do think the jump back's probably going to be harder, though, because it kind of looks like the jump back, we're starting from a low point. Whereas on the way down... Like over, I think we're starting a little bit higher. Bam. Okay, it's fine. We'll we'll skip. It. In, the, in the interest of getting things moving forward, we'll skip it. Or keeping things moving forward. Even if that cheese totally would work. Just going across. Like plebs. I'm super curious what that even did, though. No, 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 no. It obviously activated something somewhere, but. I'm assuming, like, another draw. Not drawbridge, but another one of these moving platforms. Just because they've done that so many times in this area that it would make sense for them to continue that that trend going forward here. I mean, a lot of the secrets that we've been finding are just ways to get new paths open. And the new paths just give us more Scooby snacks. So it's probably not even worth it, to be honest with you. Whatever the hell it is. Um, that jump doesn't feel safe. I cannot turn the camera here. Okay, there we go. Glad we waited for a moment. But with that said, it does look like it's meant to just keep falling over there. It might have been fine. Right. But we've been burned by a lot of those Scooby Snack trails. I just find it hard to trust them now. Okay, this one doesn't move wherever the hell it goes. to move and tilt. the Scooby Snacks down there are. I wonder how we get them. Maybe if we had jumped down earlier? Or there was that one moving platform that wasn't moving. 
There's prob- Ooh. Can't like jump up there, right? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think we were meant to really like see it until now. Game just kind of bugged out a little bit. This is the definite or this is definitely the largest set new section that we found so far today. Which gives me a little bit of hope that we might be going the right direction. The war point, that's nice too. to open this we do so 550 so the next one's probably 600 means we're doing all right for scooby snacks i'm trying not to be super anal about collecting all of them like i was at first both to just help the game continue forward and also because honestly collecting a bunch of them is kind of ass Water raising back up, or? Oh god, it is. Okay. <laughs> when I heard the sound, I was like, maybe, but it wasn't moving at all. I thought it was going to be like a more slow, gradual fill. I'm glad we stuck around the beginning there so we didn't like completely get destroyed by the water. Oh no, you dick. Oh, we're still alive? Okay. I mean, I thought we were standing in the water. There was no doubt in my mind that we were just dead there. But the game says, no, we're good. Misbehaving because of Caven. That's a good title. I like that one. I'm going to turn on my AC real quick because I'm a little bit warm. We'll be right back. But, for anybody just joining, this is part of my PS2 gauntlet. I'm trying to collect and stream a little bit of every PlayStation 2 game released in North America, besides, of course, the ones that I can't for one reason or another. You know, excessive nudity, banned on Twitch, uh, things like that. But today we are playing The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. It was a, another one requested by Nate here, and one that I'm a bit excited for. I, I'm really hoping I like this one. I love Lord of the Rings and their properties, so... I'm hoping this one's a lot of fun. Yep, I'm only a night out at the house, and French is my favorite. And you are correct if I remember right. It's supposed to be an evil storyline. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Right before I started recording, if anybody's watching the VOD later, I was talking about I went through the options here and saw that they had a uh, evil mode. So I wasn't quite sure what that was about. But I'm assuming it has something to do with playing as the evil characters. And yes, Mr. Noodle, you are the best, for sure. <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's get into the game, why don't we? As the cutscene loads. <laughs> Oops. Uh so I have seen this little intro loop a few times. Oh my god, Nate. You're not kidding, man. <laughs> it takes four freaking ever to make the cake. It's like not only do you have to collect the ingredients, which honestly, like collecting the ingredients isn't too bad. But then even after you collect the ingredients, the actual just cooking process takes forever man like in the uh in the solo world i don't have the bees for for honey production yet but i've been able to collect some enough to make one cake and then on the other world we have everything you know we have the the eggs the milk the honey all of that stuff but it still just takes forever and that's even with, I have the work speed turned up by like 3x or something like that. Now granted, I don't know if any of the server settings ever apply or not, because half the stuff in the, the settings file doesn't seem to actually do anything. <laughs> but I have it, I have the 3x speed at least enabled. Speaking of breeding, I did also accidentally see how the breeding works. I don't know any of the combinations, but I know like how the game determines what mon you get. But since it's all based off of hidden values, like it doesn't actually matter at all that I know that. 
still completely useless information to me. But it's interesting nonetheless, I guess. I just, I don't know, it's just really weird. Because how it works is, it's not really a spoiler or anything. It takes a hidden value of the, the two Mon that you breed, and then it averages them, and whatever the average of the two is, you get that Mon. You get the Mon that has that hidden value applied to them, right? So, like, if... I don't know their actual numbers or anything. I haven't looked it up. But say you take two Pengolets and breed them. They both have a hidden value of 120. Because all Mon are the same as far as that hidden value goes. So the average of 120 and 120 is 120. So you get another Pengolet. But then say you take a Pengolet and a Lamball. And Lamball has a hidden value of um, 100. And then Pengolet has a hidden value of 120. So then you breed those two together, so then you get whichever mon, let's say it's uh, T Tansy, that has a hidden value of 110. So that's the, the outcome of breeding those two or whatever. It's a weird system. I mean, it works, right? There's nothing technically wrong with it or anything. It's just a weird system to use. And it means without looking it up or using like a massive spreadsheet, there's no way for you to ever know what mon you're gonna get outside of uh breeding two of the same obviously giving you another one of the same i want to mess around with it more though because I, I keep seeing that people are breeding mon to get like better stats you know to make them faster or have a higher work speed or whatever the case may be it's like i want to keep messing around with it because i want to get some of my mon to have I don't really care about the speed so much, but I do definitely want to get higher warp speed Mon for the base. Specifically, right now, I want ones that have more fire. Like, quicker quicker work speed for fire to make more cake. <laughs> Basically. So I'm assuming the work speed applies to everything. Like, whether it's the... Using the kindling for the, for the cake, or... I guess the ice one would be kind of useless? I don't know. Because the ice one only seems to be used for, like, coolers and things, but even a basic ice mon can, can keep a cooler activated as long as they're on it indefinitely. I don't really see what the point of having one with higher work speed would be for that mon. I don't know. You only know the one combo, now you're just screwing around. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure eventually I'll get to the point to where I want to start, like, looking things up and whatnot. But that's been my philosophy, at least so far, is, like, I'm just in it to screw around and have a good time, so. I am starting to get to the point, though, where I think I need to start making the second level of balls. It's like up to about level 25-ish. The regular pal spheres work well enough. Like you might end up throwing 20 of them, but they're so easy to get massive amounts of that it doesn't really matter. But once you hit like the 25-ish, 30-ish mark, it seems like they just bash them away more than, more than you even have a chance to hit them, even if they're like super low life. I don't mind wasting a bunch of basic balls, but if they're just going to hit them away and not even give you a chance to catch, then you kind of have to upgrade at that point. The pain at 29 to use reg? It, yeah. I can see that. I mean, around 25, I think, is where I'd want to stop using the regular balls. For the, for the POW levels, that is. My levels, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. So that did nothing for us. Unless we miss something here. That takes us back to where we just were. But we don't seem to be able to go anywhere else. The other direction, because everything needs, like, longer jumps. I'm a little lost. I was worried this was going to happen. If you know where the hell you're going, I feel like this game would be super short. Because of how confusing the layout is, man, <laughs> this might take a minute. 
Um, we find a teleport point. We could teleport to the top of the mountain. Yeah, to like the sea cliffs. Because we never did get to the graveyard. Wait, where are we right now? Yeah, it says we're super close to the van. So I guess we just want to go backwards till we get back to the van. That's the closest teleport. I mean, it says we're like halfway in between two teleports. So I guess it doesn't matter which direction we go. As long as we stick to one. This way, yeah. Stupid holes. Well, there was a checkpoint in the middle of the level. How sweet. Ow. Please make it. Oh god, I was so worried that we were gonna die and get teleported back again. Oh yeah, okay, so we're not that far. I wonder if we can use the ground pound trick though to maybe make it farther here than we're supposed to. We can, let's go. <laughs> I doubt it's gonna unlock anything new for us, but. A new location's new location, man. I'll take it. What's that? More soap? We still don't have the, the soap invention somehow. It's just another shortcut. It is. It's that shortcut. That sucks. <laughs> Still nothing new. Okay. I guess at least now we know, right? We don't have to, like, wonder anymore. Make that jump. Right. Barely. Right. It's really weird how, like, your momentum doesn't seem to carry into your jumps that much. At least if you're running, right? Like, if you're just... If you... Yeah, because if you jump from a dead... Huh? Is that any... Yeah, okay. If you jump from a, a, from a dead stop, you definitely don't get as much forward momentum. But if you're running, I don't think you get any more forward momentum in your jumps. I could be wrong on that, but it doesn't feel like you do, at least. Wait, does this take us back up to the cliff? No. I know there's a shortcut somewhere that'll take us back to the top of the cliff. I think it's around the beginning here. But if not, we're getting close to the teleport anyways. Is it this one? I think it's this one. Shows and spills on Haunted Hill. Yeah, that should be it. Need the helmet to bash this web open. Isn't that just the path down, though? Yeah. So we... Did we get the helmet at the top here? We might have got the helmet at the top here, but obviously we had the helmet whenever we came through here at some point, because we've taken that path before to open up the shortcut. I, like, tweaked my neck slash shoulder somehow recently, man. It's been bugging the hell out of me. I'm guessing I just, like, slept on it wrong or something. It's the only thing that really makes sense. Because it was feeling... It started hurting a few days ago, but then it... it 
it felt okay last night, and then today it started hurting again, so. Yeah, I think this is where we might have got the helm. Game really does not want us taking a shortcut down. Fair enough. We can kind of see the level geometry, like off in the distance. Doesn't really help us in any way, but it's still kind of neat. Looking for anything we can like break open with our ass or steep inclines that we can climb up using the plungers. Oh. Anything helpful at all, really. Oh. Oh shit, okay, that's just here. Well, okay, yeah, so that was completely useless. So how did we get to the graveyard? It says there's a way Gloom and Doom down in the tomb. Can we get there from the mystery machine? I don't think so. I mean, the only place really left to explore would be the house here. I guess we just hop in there and see if anything pops up at us that we missed. I mean, I'm sure there's a couple paths that we haven't gone through that we can now. Sure. Where's Don Knotts with some words of advice when you need him? First part is it's probably so obvious where we need to go. I've probably walked past it even, but I'm a little bit stupid, so. Run. All of this, there's nothing on the other side of that bookcase that matters. Not that I can remember, at least. I do know there's a shortcut, like, higher up, but... Right. It's a headless specter. But I don't know what's, like, down here that we need, and what's up there that we need. Pretty sure this is just another way around. Is there any, like, breakable floorboards or anything? That's a negative. Absolutely nothing in here. Next! Oh shit, I almost died Run. there. Pretty sure I did that before, Run. which is the worst part it's of it. Cookies, that's nice, I suppose. Run. Scooby snacks, whatever. Did you go in here before? And I guess not. Not helpful, really. A couple more Scooby Snacks, which we'll need eventually, but... Learn that. Mm -mm. I remember this place. Um, I don't think there was anything really in here, either. Wonder, is the path still going to be op open? Oh, wait. Or no, the switch was already... Activatable. It wasn't one that we had to like ground pound. And does that? Okay, that was weird. <laughs> How the like hidden wall there started open and then just instantly closed as we were running past it. 
Guessing it was always meant to be closed. See, there's like this thing again, the fan thing, but we still can't use it. What's up, my guy? Just let me up, please. Those ghost enemies suck, man. That's a falling platform. I'm like keeping an eye out for any platforms that we can bash through on the ground. Since that is like the newest ability that we have. We hit that button? Yeah, I think so. Pretty sure we did last time too. We would have had the head bash by the time we came through here. <laughs> We're so lost. This annoying dude. I don't understand why this section's like icy. There's no water on the ground or anything that I can tell. It's just normal tile. It's not like it's anything special. Nothing about it screams, you know. This is slippery. Here. Why is the door closed? <laughs> that was... Does it always do that? Like, open and close on a timer? I never noticed it doing that before. Well, that's annoying. Oh. Yeah, I remember the chandeliers. We can skip those. That's my memory. That just gives us, like, a sandwich or some Scooby Snacks or something. It's not actually helpful. This is the section that I hate, man, because it's got the stupid chandelier that Scooby just doesn't want to grab half the time. This one. This is a fun one. There we go. I feel like we can cheese it and just jump straight over there. But I know if I attempt it, I'll die and then just have to redo the section, so. Just gonna take it slow. Slow and steady. Where I roam. Right, it's a werewolf. Stuck. Just looking at the painting, I never noticed him eating like whatever that was—a sandwich. I think it was a sandwich. No, that takes us back to the bedroom, which makes us restart the section. Oh, you know what? There was the slide somewhere in the manor here that normally we just slid down. It was like the really steep hallway thing. Now that we have the plungers, we probably won't get stuck on that, but it's one of them areas that just looks like an alternate path, not necessarily a actual like new area. Oh, you dick. <laughs> and fell in the pit? I thought we were clear. Can we just shortcut here off the bed? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we'll wait for it. Oh, no. Where's a robbie? Is it this one? No. What's Dawn got to say? We haven't seen you in a while. It's like you're going around in circles. This door takes you back to the first room in the mansion. I should clean up these webs, but I think I'll stand, just stand around here a while longer. Okay, I do remember him telling us that, so we've definitely been here before. There isn't anything in the first room of the mansion that's useful, right? It's just a shortcut back out.
or a shortcut here, I suppose, depending which way you look at it. Yeah, no. Nothing, okay. <laughs> so we keep going up here, eventually we're gonna get to the balcony section. I don't think the balcony section had anything new that we could do on it. We could go back to the fishery era area again. Now that we have the ability to bash through the ground and the, the plunger chew things, whatever. Maybe there's something new there we could do? But we went through most of the fishery section already and didn't find anything. I'm not inclined to think that there's anything actually useful there. If we don't find anything here, I don't know where else to check. I think we kind of have to, just out of necessity. Oh, there's these stairs too, but again, I think it's just like a quicker way around. These stairs like collapse whenever we get close to them. Oh god, that was close. Pay attention. Yeah, yeah, okay, so it's just an alternate way over to here. Is there anything... Else useful around here? Doesn't look like it. Got to be getting close to the balcony soon. Plus, like, the other reason why I don't think there's anything here is because if we look at the map... Well, you know I say that... There is a whole rooftop section here we've never been to before. So maybe? I guess there could be something up here. All we can really do is keep finding, like, sections on the map we haven't been to yet and try to get there using the current abilities that we have unlocked. Is there like a secret room in the middle here? Yeah. Oh, I vaguely remember this. Yeah, this was a, a shaggy section, but we already have sa shaggy up here, so. Still gonna be standing up here, or is he gone? It's weird. This button's sticking out, but it doesn't do anything. I'm guessing it lowered that carpet down and the game just recognizes that we've done it once so like it left the carpet down there but it never reset the the switch to be hittable again which it would have to do because shaggy's not there to help us up Damn it. Oh my god, I remember hating this section too. Specifically because of the bats on those chandeliers. Nice. I just want out of here, game. Please let me be free. Is this outside? Yes, okay, cool.
So we're on the balcony section. So somewhere around here, there should be a way to the rooftops, according to the map. Oh, we have one more section to get through. So not in this one, but presumably in the next loading zone, whatever you want to call it. Oh, that was close. Oh, this goes up? I don't think we've ever ridden this before. I just kind of ignored it because I didn't know how to kill the gargoyle. Okay. What are you? Black Knight's armor costume. Hold down the R2 button to hide from and sneak past him. Okay, so it's just a better version of the thing we had before. If they touch us, though, it still hurts us. That makes sense. But now we don't... Hmm, we don't have to, like, hide from them before they see us. We can just... We're just safe walking past them in general, as long as we don't touch them. I mean, it's a new power-up. I'll gladly take it. I just know there has to be more around here somewhere. Let's go ahead and get to the end. Well, thank you for the five bits, love. Appreciate you. Damn you, gargoyle. Sorry, I'm very tired. And I have no idea where to go. So I'm just, like, racking my brain trying to think of what we've missed and where, you know? The being very lost part isn't helping with the very tired thing either. But okay, according to the map, there should be another way through here somewhere. Was it show? Excuse me. Was it showing us that dude for a reason? We need to kill all of the dudes for something to happen? No, that just looks like another way around again. That's oh, just a bat. Yes, yeah, so that was just a long, pointless way around. The tower? The tower? We've been in the tower before, right? Yeah, okay. Maybe? I don't think we would have come through there and then not did whatever this is, right? Surely we've been here before. No. The switch, but that switch probably turns on the air vent, and the air vent doesn't do anything for us. I still don't have the ability to use it. Looks almost like we should be able to open this or bash this or something, though, but no luck. That door, how? But have. 
Oh, assholes. There's, <laughs> there's that door out, but have we gone all the way up before? Or did we just go out the door instantly? Dicks. I feel like we've gone all the way up before because that platform that just fell feels very familiar. Like I fell down the same one before. That just glitched through the ground. GG. Oh my god. I, <laughs> I hate everything. God for all the sandwiches and crap laying around here. Is this the one that... No, okay. thought that was the one with the, the fire chandeliers. So this one. There's so many doors out. Okay. So where does this one go? Hopefully, like, if we go out, we can just come back in. Have we been here before? I feel like we have. Yeah, because a dark and stormy night is where we fought the boss. I think... Oh, gray's just like the color for it. Yeah, places we haven't been before are like real small X's. So we've been through all of this already. Oh, crap, man. Have we been clear to the top of this one? I know, oh, I guess we couldn't have because we didn't have the boots before, right? It's a warp day. Right? It's the headless specter. Maybe. Or did we have the boots by the time we came here? Oh no, okay, it's just a quicker way out to where we had the boss fight. Right, because now we're at the end of it? Yeah. So it's like a shortcut between the two sections. Well, crap. I guess back to the fishery area we go then, man. I don't know. Away we go. <laughs> Vaguely remember this. Geronimo! Um. Yeah, we definitely haven't been. Probably. Gus about underground. We definitely haven't been there yet. Or over here, a little lab of horrors. But it doesn't seem like we can go either one of them yet. Wreck on the deck. Pretty sure we can't go there yet. Let's warp over here and see, though. Maybe I'm missing something. But I think we need the floaty ability before we can go basically anywhere else. Yeah. Shoot. Can't go there. Don't think we can go wherever this is. The colleagues in the hallways. Yeah, this is where we got the plungers. Which you would think you would be able to use, like, here somewhere. we break through this grate? No. There's the soap, but we also don't have the soap ability. 
can't go up there. Um, as far as I'm aware, we can't kill the ghost, right? Yeah. Yeah, they just hurt us if we touch them at all. No camera control. Can't do anything here. Not touching the baby snack. Okay, well. There's a little lab of horrors we haven't been to either. We definitely can't go this way. Maybe we can go to little lab of horrors? Or... This connects here, it looks like. We can double check this section and see if maybe we can come from the basement over... Wherever we're at? You know what, since we're at... We're at a warp point. Let's try that one first, and then we'll come back here. Because I'm pretty sure we can't do this section. On either side. So where would the secret passage be? Where are we exactly? Oh, we're in here. Okay. Sure. So maybe there's like a secret passage in one of these side halls that I missed. There, I mean, there is that one that like opens and then instantly closes. Books or anything to open? No. You like. I thought these opened from the inside. I feel like that one that instantly opens and then closes is just this one here. It's just not opening for some reason. On the map, it does show it connecting to who's yellow in the cellar. <laughs> There's got to be some way over there, right? I mean, I guess it could be... You didn't check over here. Is there, like, a breakable floor over here? Or maybe it's that door. Have we never gone through this door before? It's locked from the other side! Okay. Well. I think that tells us we can't get to the basement from here, then. I don't know if secret passages are always light green like that. So there's this one, which we already checked. We can't do. Yeah, no. Then there's this one, Little Lab of Horrors. I guess we'll check that one. We should have checked it from the get-go, I guess, but I was certain that we couldn't go that way. I'm still pretty certain we can't go that way, but I have to be missing something somewhere. It's like, this is more or less where we started the game at today. And I feel like we did a pretty good job of searching these areas before we 
left and started going the other way. Right! It's a headless specter! Camera's a little uncomfortably close there. According to the super useful map, we should be able to get to the little lab of horrors from here. Way to the secret lab, Scoob. Yeah, it's the one that we can't jump up high enough for. I remember talking to Shaggy about this now. I really don't want to just, like, Google it. But I might have to Google it. <laughs> like, Native 100 Frights, where to go after getting plunger? Shaggy at. Oh, man, he's not even in here anymore. Um, this is the exit, yep, that we came in. Is there anything actually in the center here? Maybe have we been here before? What is this? Yeah, okay. I think this is just a way into the room. A different way into the room. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember finding this door earlier. But I think it was like locked from the other side at the time or whatever. In that case, then that probably means I haven't been in this section of creepy crawlies in the hallways part two so maybe oh well it always only opens from the one side okay Back. starting with the mystery machine then hedge maze We weren't able to go any farther here for one reason or another. I don't remember why, but I'm guessing it's the feather ability, whatever that is. But we already checked the hedge maze and weren't able to do anything. The Mystic Playground is just like the tutorial area. We can't go here because of a one-way door. We can't go here because you need the, the flying ability or whatever. We can't go here. I don't remember why. Oh, because we need the, the higher jump. And we can't go here because we need the feather ability. So we need the feather ability, basically. It doesn't matter where we go. We need the feather ability. Either to be able to like float on the wind currents or to triple jump or something. Is it you? Are you like considered a boss? Do I have to kill you or something? No, you did absolutely nothing. You just glitched through the ground when I killed you. Okay. <laughs> Screw it. Google it is. Night of 100 sprites. Where to go after uh, suction cups or plungers? I guess they were called. Um, 
using the plunger. Where do I find the plunger? Yeah, I already know where to find it. I did that already. There's a full guide, I guess. F. That's not how you spell plunge. PNG. Plunge. Head up and follow the passage. Avoid the swinging axe. Um. After gaining the plunger power up, it says to warp to chills and spills on Haunted Hill 3. Which I think that was in the Hedge Mage section, right? No. Aha, yes. Okay. Follow the path beyond the falling boulders, collect snacks, collect more snacks, activate the warp, smash the button, and follow the new stepping stone path. Hurry though, the tide will return. Misbehaving because of cave in part one. We've been there, right? Yeah. We just got stuck, like, here. Um... So, we can- we can teleport a little bit farther, then. Seems like maybe we missed something when we came through here. Okay, from what it's saying here, there is a... Oh, shoot. There's more Scooby Snacks over there we missed before. Anyways, there's an umbrella here somewhere, which is, would be the floating ability. So we just missed it. I'm so glad I didn't hit that and just die. Did this one? I really wish we could turn the camera sometimes. Platform has the oh, the extra Scooby snacks on it. Never know when you're gonna need them to open a door. The one, two, like in between two and three. Not terribly surprised we missed something over here, I guess, but I thought we were pretty thorough. Of course, I think this is the section where it felt like we were cheesing a little bit. Because some of the jumps were just too big for us to seem to make. Which way do we want to go? Guess whichever way takes us to the second part of it. I think it was up there. I don't think it was this one. Maybe not. This is part two. Okay, yeah. This is where we got stuck at. So what did we screw up here? Can't make that jump. I'm, like, pretty certain of it. You might be able to make that one. Would that be helpful at all? Oh, there's a button here. 
Wait, is that it? Hopefully it raised more platforms throughout the level. Oh god, ice blocks. It did not. It just raised enough for us to get back over here. Okay. Um... We could try to, like, jump under the platform, maybe. To get down there. This doesn't feel right, though. This feels... cheesy, right? Like, it doesn't feel like the way you should... be beating the level? We still can't make that jump, though. Okay. We're in... part two. Go. Ignore the snacks. Trail off to the crate. I'm gonna smash each of the dry... Oh! See, I never would have got this. Okay. I see. You can smash these and make them fall. Oh my god, man. <laughs> I never would have got that. I had no idea you could skull bash these. I mean, now that I see it, it makes sense, I guess. That drops the platform so we can drop across. But I didn't know they were loose. They would just fall with a skull bash like that. Oh, it's certainly easier to jump across them now, that's for sure. All that time searching for that. Okay. And there's another power up, it looks like. Do we become Thor, the god of thunder? What is, <laughs> what is that power up? I thought we were looking for an umbrella, not a I don't I don't know, a storm cloud. You look like you're gonna move. No? Okay. Oh god, okay. It's a race. The boats still sink? They do. That's annoying. And now's really not the time to be picky about collecting everything, is it? I mean, it might as well still try and collect as much as possible, but if we have to turn around for it, it's probably not worth it. I think we are a little bit ahead of where we need to be, though, just judging by the fact that some of these boats are a little hard to jump up from. Yeah, I think we do need to take it just a little bit more slowly. Let it catch up a little bit to us, maybe? Wait, does this one... Okay, this one's solid. Thank God, man, because we would have definitely died here waiting for this one to... Oh, God. It tricked me. <laughs> we don't even need that sandwich right now. You just go for it now? Oh my god, we're alive. Okay. That jump did not look possible. Sonic enhancement for the Super Smash. You can do the Super Sonic Smash by jumping then pressing the square button. Doing a Super Sonic Smash on the ground will stun nearby monsters momentarily. They need to be pretty close for it to work. But I guess that's cool. I mean, an upgrade's still an upgrade, even if it's not a very good upgrade. <laughs>
Tight spot for a grave plot. My god, am I happy to be in a new area. Yes, I will save. Thank you, game. Avoid the invulnerable ghosts. They haunt both paths, high and low. I mean, there's our confirmation, I guess, that they are invulnerable. This key's on, like, the worst timer ever. Come on. Is there gonna be another key here, or...? Yes. Yes, there is. What about here? Can I get up to the top path? Is that possible? No, it doesn't seem to be. That felt way too short for a level, man. Are we sure there isn't something else we're supposed to be doing here? I guess all that's up there are some Scooby snacks. Oh god, don't fall off. Alright, whatever. Onward, then. Reminder to move. Yeah, okay. What do you do? We have to hit them in a certain order? No, it seems more like they all need held down at the same time, huh? A monster token? Where? Hmm. I'm assuming this is going to be something for later. Nope, maybe not. Door's locked. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I just wanted the Scooby Snacks. I didn't know it was kind of like damn near impossible to grab. There's the monster token. I have no idea how to get in there, though. Oh! That's what the vases are for. I see. I'm very glad I accidentally knocked the one over. Again, I would have had no idea I could use the Skull Bash for that. I don't really care about collecting all the monster tokens, but it would be nice if I knew how to get that one. It is, like, right there. I'm assuming we're supposed to use the chandelier to, like, shake it around and get it. But I feel like it's probably possible to cheese as well. Assuming it is possible to skull bash that one at all. something else over here yeah platform weird that it still makes the noises even after it's gone Door. 
this one. Aha. Sir will enter. Let's go. Oh. It's a pretty standard platforming level. I'm okay with that. We'll save again. Oh, never mind. No, we won't. I lied. Now, like, all of the vases and things have me concerned. I mean, let's go out. Hopefully it doesn't teleport us too far away. I'm assuming it's just a shortcut if we ever needed to come back for some reason without the teleports. It's weird to have, like, the teleports and, uh... Whatchamacallits. And the shortcuts all over the place. And the presser's inventions might help you flow through the air to get these snacks. Okay, so yeah, this is this is a later thing. It's not a shortcut. Just hey, you need a more need a more need a more snack -a? Need more snacks? Come here. Oh. Oh no, that <laughs> why'd that let out a ghost? Okay. We just slide out from the wall, look for a way to activate them. Are they not already active? No. Maybe it's in the next room. Uh. Okay. <laughs> I thought I thought something was gonna come out of there. No, especially like with the eyes there and everything, you know. Oh. Stupid door. No switches or anything, though? No. Okay. Okay, that's a new path, at least. Might as well check the last couple of doors before we leave. All of them? Sure, enter. I don't know what we're entering, but... One way trip to the crypt part four. We're making progress. We're moving forward. I gotta remember, though, that we never made it to the top of that one area. So that felt almost like a, a boss area or, or something, because it, it had that big picture of the... I don't know what the ghost is called, but... had that big, big mural picture or whatever of the, the dude at the top. Makes me think we might be fighting him. Those move, huh? You're just a bunch of Scooby Snacks, right? No, you're more soap. I still don't... <laughs> I still don't understand what the soap thing is. I, I... Well, I guess I don't even know for sure if that was soap, but it makes a bunch of bubbles when you pick it up, so I have to assume it's soap or soap adjacent. But then that means this room was pointless. Can I, like, flip through? How big are the invisible walls here? Can I get around them somehow? <laughs> oh, 
always invisible walls where you don't want them, you know? Aha! I get wrecked, game. <laughs> where does this go, I wonder? Oh, back to the beginning. Uh, is this good or is this bad? Where are we exactly? <laughs> That's the thing. I have no idea where we are right now. Is this where I was... I need to find a way to... Is this way... Okay, yeah, so the, <laughs> we, we cheesed our way past the switch, basically. This is the very next door after the switches, although presumably it was a one-way locked door, so we might actually have cheesed our way a little bit farther than that. I, mean, I do want to do it legit, but if I can't find it, I'm totally down to just, like, you know, <laughs> not deal with it. <laughs> Takes us back here. At least now I know a way around it if I need to. Yeah, this... Okay, 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 good. We need to find a switch to do it right. Which I would have thought would have been this. That looks kind of like a switch pulling that, but it didn't activate them, right? Yeah, no. There's nothing else in here. I mean, it looks like we should be able to interact with this. Just having that random block in there. Oh, that was a switch. Okay. I guess. Or was it just... Was it killing the ghost that activated it? I didn't think you were supposed to be able to kill ghosts, though. I'm so confused, game. Oh, Zero, what's up, man? Welcome back. You've entered just in time to watch me be very, very confused by what we're doing in this game. Oh, God. Whatever. Will at least teleport us back to the top? Oh, it's right here. That's not bad. Honestly, I'm not sure if we're more or less confused than we were earlier. Goodness for that stun power up we just collected, huh? Oh man, I didn't think we were gonna grab it. Got scared. Is that the soapbox? No! <laughs> I mean, it's a soap box, but it's not the soap power-up as far as I can tell. Wait, now where are we going? Can't swing that far, can I? These chandeliers are gonna be the death of me. Just mentally. game always seems to have its own ideas on whether you should be able to grab it or not. Right. Right. 
I don't think it'll let us swing far enough. Oh, it won't let us swing back and forth at all. It's only side to side. And there's absolutely nothing over there. What am I missing? Okay. Um. Let's see. <laughs> I'm gonna go back up here and go through the door where those witches were, where we kind of cheesed our way past this, the need to hit this button here. Um, if I don't keep dying. Maybe I missed something up there. I did kind of leave that area after I found the cheese. You're a little out of the loop, but you think this game was made in the same engine as Battle for Bikini Bottom? Battle for Bikini Bottom is a much better game, though. <laughs> I don't want to say this is a bad game. It's just a very confusing game. There's probably already some well-established modding tools for this game. That's pretty cool. If that is true, yeah. I haven't looked into it at all, though, so I have no clue. Oh, that's right. It was just a dead end up here. I remember now. Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't think there's anything we can do out here, then. Oh, come on. I'm gonna get back up there, game. Don't... Okay. <laughs> I don't care if you want me to go this way. It's happening. What am I missing, though? Come over here. And go to that center platform. And then seemingly there's nowhere to go after that. Oh, well. But I mean, there's gotta be. It's just a dead end in every direction otherwise. At least until we get the, um the umbrella. If we had the umbrella power up, then we would be able to go back to the room where we can, like, collect a bunch of stuff. But I think it's just for collecting. I think it's this room. Doom and doom in the tomb. That's presumably where we're trying to get. Where are we right now? We're back here. There's nothing I can do in here. The only power-ups I have is that, which does nothing. I have this one, which makes enemies ignore us. And that's it. I mean, I have the digging ability, but there's nothing to dig here. We do have the head bash. Yeah, but we can't head bash these chains or anything. Is there an updraft over there? It looks almost like there's an updraft. I wonder if we need... You know what, the Umbrella's probably double faucetted because you can probably use it as like a glide ability as well as a ride up drafts ability. Make sure I didn't miss anything in here. None of these crypts are enterable. And this is just a big circle with only one exit. That one exit is the one that takes in the area with the cheese. Oh, wait. 
warp gate. Aha, there is another exit that I missed. I'm glad we came back. There's a modding channel for this game in the Heavy Iron Modding Discord. I've never even heard of it, but that's pretty cool. I think with, like, better direction on where to go and what to do. Not even necessarily where to go, per se, right? Because, like, that's part of the Metroidvania experience, exploring, figuring out where to go and whatnot. But just better explaining what each power can be used for. <laughs> I think the game would do a lot better. So I could see modding tools being pretty cool for, like, making your own levels, maybe better level design as far as like teaching the players what they can and can't do with their different power-ups that they have oh that didn't work at all yeah the handful of games that i've looked for like mods for on the ps2 there was like nothing so i just kind of gave up on searching for PS2 mods, to be honest. Oh, like that. I had no idea we could do that with the the head bash thing. <laughs> I just happened to accidentally smash it. Otherwise, I would have had no clue. I thought the gargoyles were just in our way. Something we had to, had to deal with. Dudo Regalia? No, I have not. It's a recent shining star in terms of 3D platformer, Metroidvania. I feel like uh, Metroidvanias have had a bit of a resurgence in recent years. You know, there's been a lot of pretty decent ones. Mostly from indie studios that have come out. Are you throwing me up? Here? No, okay. Where? Where are you throwing me to? Maybe we gotta cross this precarious platform. Yeah, there we go. It showed me where the key was. I'm just dumb. Oh, it's right there. I am super happy they show the shadows for items. That makes things a hell of a lot easier. Oh. <laughs> Half expected Shaggy to like hit one of the pumpkins and just get knocked out while running away. I don't have much content, but its movement is stellar. Is it like still in early access or something, and that's why it doesn't have much content, or is it just a relatively small game? No wrong answers, I'm just curious. You got two extra Tim bits? Does that mean you're gonna share love? Originally made for a game jam, that's awesome. In one of the coffins above? Hit the stone switches to find out which one. There's stone switches? There's coffins above? Oh, did you offer me some? I'm sorry, I must have completely missed it. Sorry, I don't know why I'm trying to cheese. We can probably just, like, walk right around here and get there. You gonna come out? I'm just chilling in there, boy. I guess you just want to chill in there. That's fine. Oh, in the car forever ago. Okay. Well, of course I didn't want any in the car. I just ate my donut then. Right. Gladly accept that warp point. Thank you, game. Uh, I wonder where they... Goes. Probably finish exploring this area first. That looks like something else that we need the thingy for. The umbrella or whatever.
Oh, do you have to, like, get up here within a certain amount of time to get these or something? It can't seem to, like, head bash them open or, or ground pound them open or anything. Oh, well. Either that or the items, like, popped out of them and I just missed it. That's possible. Shoulder hurts. Well, anyways, love, if you don't end up eating all of the Timbits, I will take one or two. Literally just one or two, though. I had a donut for my snack today, so you can eat your Timbits. Well, thank you. That's kind of you. Hi. And jump up here. No, I haven't smelled anything. What'd you make? Oh, you probably made your gross brownies, didn't you? <laughs> I shouldn't call them gross. They might end up tasting okay. I don't know, but... Eat a pot pie in a bit. Man, I haven't had pot pie in a while. But I freaking love pot pie. I've never made, like, a homemade one from scratch. Not properly, at least. I have done, like, with the, the biscuit crust, you know, where you make, like, the filling... And then you just layer the top with biscuits and then put in the, the oven and let them cook instead of like a, a pie crust. Which, don't get me wrong, those are good, but they're just not quite the same as pot pie. But I absolutely freaking love frozen pot pies, especially the Marie Caliander ones. I stopped buying them as much because a mixture of the, the salt content as well as just trying to save money, you know, with making food instead of buying frozen food. But I used to eat, like, I don't know, four or five of those things a week. It was like a main meal for me. <laughs> Most days of the week. Keep it up, Scooby. I'm almost there. Got it. Jeepers, my skin was beginning to chafe. Hey, you won't get away that easily. <laughs> you think that was easy? This will teach you to cross paths with me. Here. I think this old friend of yours is dying to see you. <laughs> yeah, this is the dude I thought we were going to be fighting. Okay. It's the green ghost. That's right. And pretty soon you won't stand a ghost of a chance. <laughs> You only have one about once a week? I mean, that's much more reasonable. <laughs> what are we... Oh, okay. <laughs> that's not what we're doing. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh, for real? Like I said, I love those ones, man. They're delicious. I used to buy, like, when I was younger, my granddad, my granddad raised me, by the way. I feel like that's kind of important, so I was with him a lot. But he, uh, he always bought the, the, like, banquet ones, because they're, they're super cheap. Still pretty tasty, don't get me wrong, but, like, that's why he bought them, though, because cheap. And I like those ones, for sure. But I definitely prefer the Marie Caliander. Those ones are delicious. Was it the beef that I liked the most? I know they had like a, a cheddar one too that was really good. But again, it was like extra salty. <laughs> Tasted delicious. But if you think the regular ones are high in salt, holy crap, those cheese ones were insane. We trying to like suck it into the oh what damn you okay how many times do we have to do this though Ooh, chicken parm with broccoli sounds good. 
I'm not sure I've tried that one before, but that sounds delicious, my guy. Maybe a quick dinner for us soon? I wouldn't mind grabbing one soon, love. I, saying, I try not to eat too much salt these days, but like a little bit extra every now and then, you know? Hmm. Honestly, chicken parm and broccoli sounds amazing to me. I know Noodle's not a huge fan of cooked broccoli, but I love it. I love food. I'm not a very picky person at all, and I, I greatly enjoy most foods. <laughs> okay, well that didn't work. Does it have to like actually be stopped at one of them for it to work? I think he's too far away for this one because he's like in between the two spots. Yeah. Let's go, that's two. Oh wait, that actually worked? It looks like it didn't. That's not like cooked broccoli in your food? Yeah. True. But I do not have that problem though. I quite enjoy salt. Or salt? I mean, I do. That's why I try not to use too much of it. But I quite enjoy broccoli, cooked or otherwise. There's so many roasts around here. Scooby Doo, the green ghost isn't really a ghost. Well, what about the Reaper or the Black Knight? Have you seen them as well? Uh huh. Jeepers. Those are all villains from our past. Scooby-Doo, something strange is definitely going on here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Scooby's going just a little bit insane from all of this. Grab me! That is a ghost! I saw it, Scooby. Ah! Right! Easy, guys. It's just me, Holly. <sighs> oh, it's Holly. Kind of sus that you just appear right Boy, after I'm glad to see you. all of that. And seeing some pretty strange things. Hey, what's that? Oh, I found a box of my Uncle Alexander's inventions. I'm not sure why it's in here, though. He usually keeps them in his super secret lab. A secret lab? Yeah, that's where he thinks up all his crazy inventions. Maybe there's something in here we can use. Or a clue. Or a ruby snack. Solar powered nightlight. Underwater winner's racket. Microwave safe ice cube tray. It makes it easier to get the ice cubes out, right? What's with this umbrella? That's actually one of my uncle's more useful inventions. Rapney? Oh. Rolly? Anybody? Here we go again. Your family avoids adding salt to homemade stuff because you're aware that everything everywhere else puts lots of salt and stuff. Can't avoid sodium in the meals and drinks we get from outside the house. Might as well lower the sodium in what we make inside the house. I mean, that's very true. I, uh, I've read, I've never, like, actually measured the salt that I use at home to see how it compares. But I've read that, like, most home-cooked meals aren't nearly as chock full of salt as the stuff that you would buy from elsewhere, though. So, like... It's probably not that big of a deal, but I have myself considered using the like lower sodium salts, the ones that have like potassium salts mixed in with regular salt, or I think they have the, the sodium free ones too that are like pure potassium salt. Then you just got to be careful not to overuse that. That way you don't like poison yourself with the amount of potassium, right? But I mean... I don't have like super high blood pressure or anything. My blood pressure is a little bit high. So I'm just aware of the salt I eat and I try not to eat too much of it. So like, I don't worry that much about it, but I'm not, you know, uh, 18 to 20 something year old anymore. So I don't want to be in pot pies five times a week like I used to, <laughs> but every once in a while, it definitely sounds like a good treat. I can use the umbrella to float through the air. Just hold down the X button after you do a double jump. 
Yeah, okay. So it lets us jump a little bit farther. And again, presumably if there's an updraft, we rise in the air with it as well. So this seems like it'll probably open up a lot of areas for us, but there's definitely one I can think of right off the top of my head that we can go to now that we couldn't before. That would be... First off, let's see, because I can't remember if I did or not. can't remember the name of it, but it's here somewhere. Smuggler's Cove? Yeah, this one. Going down which way? Wait, was it this one? I think it was this one. We made burgers and frozen onion rings last night? That sounds delicious. We had... What did we eat last night, Noodle? I, don't even... I can't remember. I might have warmed up a bowl of soup? Or no, I had a salad. I had a uh, roasted chickpea salad. Um, and then I added some shredded chicken to it for a bit of extra protein in the meal. That wasn't part of the, the recipe. But... Still, I wanted it. So, like, <laughs> it was huge. Honestly, it was too much food. But I couldn't help myself. I had made it all. I didn't know how well it would be, like, if I put it in the fridge with the, the chickpeas and everything. It probably would have been fine, but... So I just kind of slowly forced myself to finish eating it. It was good, though. I really enjoyed myself. To save it again. So where are we actually going with this? We're going... Here? Shivier Timber Scooby? Okay. I mean, that could be a boss area. Regardless, it's somewhere we haven't gone before, so it's somewhere we need to go now. Probably not the best with salads, you only like sweet dressings. I'm more of a... I'm not a huge sweet person, unless it's sweets, right? Like, I like donuts, obviously, I've been talking about them. Uh, cakes, brownies, cookies, pies, I have a soft spot for a couple of different kinds of pies. Um, so, like, I'm not anti-sugar entirely or anything like that. I'm just not a big, like, sweet-savory mix kind of person. The only sweet-savory mix I like is teriyaki. Teriyaki is delicious, but... My favorite salad dressings are generally acidic ones. Although I am also a big fan of ranch, so... The one I had last night was a, uh... A homemade one. It was a mix of soy sauce, a little bit of oil, some mayonnaise. I wanted to use light mayonnaise, but I didn't. And uh, mustard. Oh, and lemon. I forgot about lemon. A little bit of lemon for the acidity. And it was pretty good, honestly. I, I think I should have made a little bit more than what the recipe called for. Just because... I added that shredded chicken in it, so, you know, it bulked it up a bit more than what they expected it to be. So there wasn't quite enough dressing for the whole thing, I feel like, but other than that, it's really good. I'll probably end up trying that dressing again at some point. On just salad in general. Any mustard is so good? Yeah, noodle's a big sweet sauce type of person. She's into a lot of that stuff. Never done it for me, though. My go-to for salads, though, is usually either some form of Italian. Oh, I thought we were safe on that one. Some sort of Italian dressing, uh, preferably fat-free Italian. It's not a not trying to eat fat sort of thing. It's not for a nutrition reason, it's for a taste reason. I just honestly don't think high fat Italians taste that great. At the very least, I don't think they taste any better than just low fat, no fat Italians. But it's usually like a low fat Italian with added vinegar or just a homemade vinegar dressing, which is really just like vinegar, a little bit of oil to help thicken it up, blended heavily, 
with either some garlic or some mustard or sometimes just the vinegar oil and you know, like salt and pepper and whatnot, of course. But... Oh my god. I just wanted to see what was in the hole. Not worth it, I guess. It almost feels like we could just make that jump, but... I don't trust myself to try. Humans with sour cream. Honestly, I've never tried it with sour cream. I do love sour cream, though. Another one of my favorite things to eat are uh, pierogies. And oftentimes I'll make a dressing out of like sour cream uh, and soy sauce. To toss them in. And then if we have any like mushrooms or anything maybe fry up some mushrooms and onions or something saute them real quick and mix with the the sauce toss that in the pierogi and like yeah same premise as sour cream and onion chips i mean it makes a lot of sense it does sound good i've just never tried it before oh yeah shredded cheese is good on pierogies too of course or in the sauce for the pierogies Speaking of love, I forgot I laid out the burger, which I'm going to use for soup. But I laid out something. Oh, don't forget I laid out those sausages from the freezer, the breakfast sausages from the freezer. We should try those soon. And uh, one, make sure they're not too freezer burnt since I did dig them from like the bottom of the freezer. And then two, eat them soon if they uh, do taste okay. Because they were already open before I put them in the freezer. I don't want them to go bad. <laughs> These are a bunch of bouncing platforms that are. Where I roam, Scooby. Oh god, man. I just know at some point we're gonna get to a door that we can't go through because I haven't collected enough of these Scooby Snacks. But at the same time, I don't want to obsess over collecting them all because it's gonna do that. I'm just gonna keep dying. It's just gonna slow everything down. And I was hoping to beat the game today. I don't think that's gonna happen now. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Based off the fact that we only have like an hour left in the first hour and a half or so <laughs> of today was spent just trying to figure out where the hell we were going. Scooby. It turns out we could just head bash something that Scooby. I never in a million years would have guessed we could head bash. This area seems simple enough, though. It's basically just hit the buttons and jump on the platform. Nice and simple. Here we go. Yes, yes, we can go. Ruby snacks. These bouncing things seem like they should bounce a little bit higher. This is death. Yep. The honey mustard dressing used is good on burgers as well. I mean, excuse me if I don't try it, but... <laughs> but Noodle might try that. I think, Noodle, you've used honey mustard on, like, chicken patty sandwiches and stuff before, right? Like, crispy chicken sandwiches? I don't think she's ever tried it on a burger, though. It doesn't sound like a bad combo if I liked honey mustard. But since I'm not a big fan of honey mustard, that's why I don't think I'd personally really do it. But I've been really into mustard lately. <laughs> not in, like, a weird way or anything. I know that sounds kind of weird. 
But like I've always used mustard as a condiment and very rarely used it as like a cooking ingredient though until recently, right? Noodle and I tried this mushroom soup recipe a while back from uh, a meal kit that we're subscribed to. And it was a uh, mushroom and thyme uh, with mustard and cheese and like the sauce. I think it was cream cheese if I remember correctly. And that's like what made up the, the broth of the soup. I mean, there was like other moisture in there as well, of course, but those were the main flavorings, thyme, mustard, cream cheese. And ever since then, I've been slowly trying to like add mustard to more things just as a seasoning. And I've really been enjoying it. I've, I've added it to like rice, um, to a couple different kinds of pasta and things like that. And it's been, so far, it's been really good. Soups, I've been putting it in different kinds of soups. Especially for me, it's the like stone ground mustard or spicy mustard. I've seen it called like different things, but I really like those mustards specifically too. The ones that are more chunky, a little more mustardy with their mustard. Yellow mustard's fine. I don't dislike it or anything, but I just like the extra pungency of like the stone ground or Grey Poupon style mustards. Mm. Noodles got this one. Honey mustard barbecue sauce. Or it's not honey mustard, right? It's a barbecue sauce. Uh, honey, uh, blah, blah. A mustard barbecue sauce at the very least. I can't remember if it's honey or not. It's like Cattleman's or something? Yeah, Cattleman's Carolina barbecue. It's a sweet tangy, like she said, but with a, a bunch of mustard notes in it. Um... Oh, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's made with mustard, because, like, it... Oh, shit, that was dumb. Because the, the whole barbecue sauce is, like, a orangish color. Not, like, a barbecue color, but, like, you know, an off yellow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's mostly mustard. Just with some extra barbecue-y type stuff in it. Be it some brown sugar, Worcestershire. I don't know, I haven't actually looked at the ingredients on it, but that sort of stuff. Nate says mustard is great. I do. I do have to agree, my guy. I used to cook with a bunch of, like, mustard seed or put, like, mustard seed in my salads and stuff, too, for a little crunch and a little pop. But I, I need to buy the expensive ones again because Noodle and I have been buying the the cheaper, like, just the, the store brand tubs or little, little containers. Tub sounds like a big thing of, like, mustard seed. And, like, they're bitter for some reason. I don't remember my mustard seed ever really being bitter before. So I need to just buy, like, higher quality one again and see if maybe it's just poor quality of the, the store brand one. Because so I really liked throwing it in towards the end of, like, cooking a steak. That way they have time to soften up a little bit. Or, like I said, throwing it in a salad for a little bit of little bit of pungency in the salad, plus a, a little bit of crunch. The flavor is a fair bit different whenever they're cooked or not cooked. But and then I've also seen... I don't remember if it was a cooking channel on YouTube or just somewhere random. I saw it online. But I've seen... Why couldn't we make that jump? I've seen people just take mustard seed and vinegar and let it pickle in the fridge, like, overnight or whatever. And it's supposed to, like... The mustard seed's supposed to swell up from all the vinegar, soften up a little bit, and then you have, like, a a very rudimentary homemade kind of mustard um, with a texture kind of similar to caviar. They, like, are supposed to just kind of pop in your mouth or whatever. And, uh, they, I don't know, it sounded really good to me, but when I tried it with mine, they just ended up being, like, super bitter, so I need to buy higher quality ones. Uh, THQ Renderware. Heavy Iron Studios. <laughs> there, I mean, there you go. I guess that's why it's on the Heavy Iron Discord or whatever, right? Heavy Iron Modding Discord. But those are the only three people. I'm assuming THQ is the... Oh, this game, this part of the game? I have no idea. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea who made this level. But, yeah, it is a pain. The platforming in this game in general is kind of a pain. They added challenge by making the jumps, like, 
super far apart, you know, like just barely doable in a lot of sections. And these bouncing platform things, they don't feel good. It's like you can't just jump higher off of them. You have to wait until you're at your top of the jump and then double jump and then float. And it's just, it's just awkward. It's kind of the game and the whole game in a nutshell. The whole thing's just kind of awkward. Which is why I was saying that, like, Battle for Bikini Bottom, assuming it is the same engine, which I think you found out that it was, right? Is definitely the better game. <laughs> Would highly suggest playing that instead, but... This one's not bad, and it definitely has potential to be good, which is why the, the modding tools sound really cool. Because, again, if there was a little bit more thought put into the mechanics and level design... And I feel like the game could actually be pretty solid. Yeah, like that jump was tight. Can we make that? I feel like we can just make that. But should we make that? I don't know. It looks like we could probably jump back up here afterwards. If there is like one of the super trampolines over there. But no, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go the way it looks like the game wants us to go. We need to get the Scooby Snacks anyways. Open more doors later. If I'm right about the way the doors work in this game. We need another, like, 100 Scooby Snacks, 150 Scooby Snacks for the next door. The more we collect now, the better. Hopefully now we never have to do it again, since we finally made it through. Uh, where are we? This way? This way. We must get the ability to, like, jump higher or something in the future, man. Unless, is the game going to have us, like, just jump down just for the fun of it? Maybe. Optijack, what's up, man? I've seen you kind of, like, Jack just secretly chilling in here all day. I was wondering months. if you are ever going to say hello. Or chilling in Discord, that is. Not in here, I guess. You have a game that you want your votes to go towards, my guy? You weren't here earlier when I was talking about it, but I did make it so the votes matter even more now. Because we're only counting the... For games to play, at least. Or, or to buy next. We're only counting the games that have votes. We're ignoring all the ones that don't. And then we're only gonna use the, the like, free votes all the games got if there's no other votes on on games at some point mass effect i mean i figured as much but still gotta ask you never know so regalia's movement is yeah so i'll have to give it a try it's on steam i assume on pc or is it like itch.io or something Ah, very nice, man. I need to come over one of these days and we can play some more. Speaking of, since you're on my family plan for Switch, um, if you're down, I want to get the Nintendo Switch online like bonus pack or whatever soon. Because Noodle's been playing a lot of Animal Crossing, so getting the uh, DLC for would be nice. And I know we talked about it before. And then, of course, getting all of the extra content for... Or getting all the N64 games, like all the Mario Party games and shit would be cool. Did they ever add Pokemon Coliseum to...
Switch Online? I don't think they did, mm. but I could be wrong. Now. Steam only five ninety nine. Hell yeah. I will try to remember to put that on my wish, wish list, watch list, whatever. Here when the stream is over. Oh, that's right. I forgot you got rid of your Switch. Damn, boy. I have two. As long as you're, like, careful with it, you can use one of mine. I'm not going to sell it because it's the original launch model, hence why I want you to be, like, extra careful with it as well. Because I plan on modifying it sooner or later. Um, but, yeah, if you want to, like, start a game early or whatever... Can you get your bonus or buying one? Okay. No problem. My, no problem, my guy. Words are hard. So we came all the way up here and then... Oh, wait, no. It showed a picture of a boat falling. Or a picture, a video. Was it like... Ah, aha. Uh -huh. Nope, not like that. Okay, where does that boat come to? Do I just have to, like, float over there and hope for the best? Oh, okay. That wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. I didn't realize it came that close. We got the checkpoint. I'm going to add your votes to Mass Effect real quick so I don't forget. Mass Effect. 209, my guy. Oh, not 509. I'll give you 300 extra votes. There we go. weird place to put a save point like making you jump for it oh 69 percent we should have just left it shouldn't have even saved speaking of mass effect and votes and all that we are going to be rolling for the next game to play tonight uh before we end the stream this game's not going to be done yet but i'm hoping to finish it before next like the end of stream next week so i just want to have whatever game prepared for whenever that happens if anybody has any last minute votes for games they want to get in or anything now's the time to do it to complete mass effects to complete it's a it's another long one most of the games with big votes are longer games not all of them but most of them are Room I arrived through. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Mass Effect's another one Rue wants to watch. It sucks their work schedule, like, eats up their entire Wednesday for when we're streaming. I mean, their hours are a couple... They're a couple hours behind us as well. But, like, that certainly doesn't help anything. But, yeah. Oh, oh, well, I missed, like, half of those. Whatever. I have the plungers. Why can I not just walk up these slopes. Mass Effect 1 isn't too long compared to some other games like Persona. Yeah, no, I think when I had done everything in it before my save got lost, so like everything but the final mission, I think it took me like 80 hours or something. I'd have to double check. That was a long time ago. I don't know if Steam was tracking hours fully then or not. But like... Really? That's it? That seems so short. Including DLC and all that crap? I thought I was playing for like somewhere between 60 and 90. I mean, I was doing Completionist. But HLTB has that listed for 43 hours. I might be off, man. That's a real possibility. I mean, God, I was... What, 18, 19 when I played Mass Effect? Like, <laughs> that was... 12 years ago, at least. Hold on. I'm going to add that game to my wish list and see if Steam tracked how long I was playing for. Or not. Okay, yeah. It says 58. So about 60 hours is what I spent doing it. 
Now, it is possible that I walked away from the computer a couple times or something, but yeah, I'm about 60 hours into it, or was about 60 hours into it before I lost all of my progress and just gave up. Why do I have Mass Effect 2 twice? I have Mass Effect 2 2010 edition, and then I have Mass Effect 2 2010. And the edition one is bigger <laughs> than the other one. <laughs> I don't know. That makes no sense, but... Anyways, let's, uh... What was it called? Was it pseudo-regalia? Yeah, there it is. Add that to my wish list so I don't forget about it. Play the remaster. It probably saves hours if they fix the elevator loading times. I don't... Do I have the Legendary Edition? I feel like I do. I don't know if I have it on console or on PC. I'd have to check again. Either hop on Infinite Backlog or... I mean, that's probably what I'd do. Because Infinite Backlog has all of my games, not just the... Steam games, which is helpful, but... One probably has the DLCs. That's true, yeah, because, like... I know... I don't know. The way I got them on Steam was a little bit weird because I owned them on on the EA store, whatever, Origin, um, because they, at the time, didn't have the DLC on Steam for them or didn't support them on Steam at all or whatever the case may be. How do I deal with you? Oh, I guess Ground Pound. I kind of forgot Ground Pounding was a thing. Um... Yeah, okay, so they were on Steam, but I don't think they had all the DLC for Steam. Or maybe... I don't remember why. For some reason, I was buying them on Origin and says Steam, at least some of them. But then I saw a trick online that you could do... Where, on Origin, if you get the CD key from there, the product key or whatever, that product key was redeemable on Steam. So I was able to redeem them on Steam, even though I bought them on Origin. I don't know if that maybe has something to do with it, or if maybe they release like a Game of the Year edition at some point, and I bought that as well, and that's what it is, and just for some reason it's listed weird on Steam. I have no idea. I'm just guessing. Spend a lot of time just taking... I mean, that's true, too. The whole idea of just taking in the atmosphere and reading codexes and stuff. I probably did spend a fair bit of time doing all that crap, but... Again, it was like 12, 13 years ago that I played, so I remember very little about any of it. This is garbage, man. Why do the plungers not work here? This is so annoying. And of course, we have all these stupid witches, too, which... Suck. One drop cake or something? No. Did you mention I am alive yesterday? I don't think you did. Is that another like Metroidvania or just a game recommendation in general? Why is there a flying fish up here? Mass Effect you always too because mom bought it for you when it launched for PS3 and you were so damn confused with the story. Yeah, I can imagine, man. Hopping straight from, uh, or hopping straight into two without playing one. Conversely, I only ever played one and only ever on PC. Never played any of them for console. i check Infinite Backlog real quick here. And... The uh, knit backlog. Oh, I got signed out. Log in. Uh, no. Go. Uh, my collection. Mass Effect. Yeah, okay, no. Apparently, I just have the Mass Effect 1 and 2 for PC. Doesn't look like I ever ended up picking up the Legendary Edition. 
I'm not against doing it, though. As long as it's not too much. Assuming that game does get rolled. I'd be willing to buy it to play through it. I'd rather play with the new quality of life changes and uh, higher res textures. Are they using the same models or are they like full remasters? I don't remember. I know it's like higher res textures and quality of life changes, but beyond that, I can't remember if they changed anything or not. Oh, and it includes all the DLC too, right? Which is handy. Especially because back in the day, at least, getting the uh, last DLC, whatever it was, working on the Steam version of Mass Effect was a pain. It was never meant to be on Steam. It was like a origin exclusive or whatever. Forty plus DLC from the three games. Holy hell! How did we get the monster token though? I think that switch like spun these things, but that didn't seem to do anything other than spin them around a little bit. I cheese my way up there again. Game has some weird geometry. You can definitely use that to your advantage. Yeah, this level seems pretty solid, though, at least for my whole three minutes of searching here. All three games have advanced, advanced, enhanced models. Shaders, FC lighting, and upgraded audio. FC. FX, okay. <laughs> I was very confused. I was like, what the hell is FC? Full clear? Uh, fancy crap? Oh, <laughs> I have no idea. I was so com confused, my guy. You had me lost. Not an indie game or PS2 game. It's PS3 360 era, but the reason you brought up is because I'm alive is so far your only speed run. Ah, nice, man. Yeah, I mean, the name sounds vaguely familiar, but not knocking the game or anything, but it's kind of a generic-ish sounding name, you know? So I, I'm not sure if I've actually heard of it before or not, or if it just sounds similar to other things. But... Big fan of speedrunning, though. I used to do a little bit of speedrunning, uh, Mario 1 speed... Or not Mario 1. Mario 3 speedrunning. I never got to, like, the top of the leaderboards or anything, and I only ever did it for fun. I never took it, like, seriously or anything like that. But I had a pretty decent first couple of levels. I just never... And, and like, all the, uh, the Armada in World 8, I was pretty decent at. But I never practiced, like, the last level. <clears throat> the last two levels, rather. Or... Uh, World 1, Level 2, I was really bad at. That's the other one. Sorry, I was trying to... I thought we had went through this door before, but it's, like, not. And talk yourself down, dog. We know you top 10 that big sword game. Um, not anymore. I was one of the top players in the world for... Oh, God, I can't even remember the name of the game now, man. That's terrible. Deepest Sword. I was one of the top players in the world. But, yeah. but I stopped practicing it a while ago. <laughs> I'm definitely not top anything anymore. Well, I mean, maybe like top 50 or something still, but like that's not really impressive, you know? It's just, <laughs> yeah. Sounds really dirty. I mean, the whole game's kind of dirty. That's kind of the point, right? It's filled with sexual innuendo. Dance because you had to get the pot pie out of the oven. Enjoy, my guy. You're really making me one pot pie, though. Might have to grab one tomorrow. Have it for dinner or something. Oh, I don't know. I'm supposed to be making soup tonight. Maybe like Saturday or something. I'll have pot pie for dinner. That platform falls. And we have a... 
stupid fish here that we have to deal with. Oh, I hate this game. <laughs> it's a lie. I don't actually hate the game. I hate the enemy placement and the decisions they made for the game. Oh shit, yeah, I forgot about the, the meal plan meals that we still have sitting in there. Yeah, no, I think we're I think we're gonna have to wait a few days to get Popeyes, but <laughs> soon though, sometime next week, I think we're gonna have to get some Popeyes. Your big sword in the thick dragon hole is not sexual at all. You right, you right. Especially when the thick ass dragon says shit like, um. Ooh, I think I actually Jack felt it that time. Or, I can't remember the other thing she says. I always just skip past it, but, you know. Uh. On the plus side, I think we've collected enough Scooby Snacks now to get through the next door if we ever get to another door. Depends how many more times we die to this stupid flying fish up here. Maybe we need to, like, walk off. Hydrate, <laughs> because you're getting thirsty thinking about that dragon. I believe it, boy. Can we jump over? We might be able to jump over it. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, we're at What? <laughs> we get a... Ugh. We get over it, and then we miss it? From, like, the side? Spoiler alert, my guy. They're disgusting. <laughs> but we're going to give them to you anyways. Or one of each of them to you, so you can try them. Yeah, <laughs> they're terrible. They all, like... It's... it's. Oh, God. I just... How did I... I just clipped into the geometry there a second ago. How did I... That could prove useful if I ever decide I need to cheese or sequin braid again. But I don't know how I did that. Just like random luck. Anyways, it's it's just Duncan's coffee mixed with some sort of malt beverage. At least according to the packaging. But they taste like sour. Like they're not they're not good, man. I've never in my life wanted sour coffee. And, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty ew. Noodle thought she was gonna like them, was so excited to get them whenever we took our vacation and went to the cabin and whatnot. Thankfully, she tried them before we left, because they ended up being oh. gross, gross. Oh, well, no. I guess you still ended up taking them with you anyways, didn't you, love? Even though they were gross, gross. Oh no! Please, game, just let me through! Oh my god. Where are we on the map? Yeah, there's a warp point, like in the very next section. I just want to get to the warp point and then we can finish for the day, or be finished for the day. I'm not positive, but I think when you reload the game, it restarts you from the beginning. And I'd really rather not have to, like, actually restart from the beginning. Walk all the way back here, that is. Yeah, to Noodle's credit, she did try them. They were always just gross. When I was younger, I used to drink, like, coffee with whiskey, and I didn't mind it. But whatever, whatever they spiked bees with is just gross. Honestly, I think I'd rather just have, like, coffee and vodka. Or coffee and anything, really, than... Oh, God. I'm getting impatient now. It's hurting me. I'd rather have coffee and anything. I'm not a big coffee drinker these days anyways, but if I was, man, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, you know what would actually be pretty decent, I feel like? I got these uh, spiked creams that I gave a bunch of people for Christmas, and uh, we had enough for Noodle and I to try most of them. And they were actually pretty good. A little too sweet for me, but mixed with coffee, 
a little bit of extra sweetness, I think, would be a good thing. So, like, just take those, because they're pretty... They're not, like, super strong, but they're up there. They were, like, 20, 30% or something like that. So dump a little bit of that in with some coffee. That would probably taste okay. Certainly better than the crap Duncan's made. I'm Alive is the only game that normally takes over an hour to beat that you've beaten in under an by the fish. Yeah, the only games I've speedrun are Mario games, which, I mean, technically, oh. Mario 1 and Super Mario World are meant to take longer than, you know, the half-ish hour that I've beaten them in. But both of them have methods specifically to beat them more quickly. So I don't know if you would count them or not. Because you have the warp whistles in Super Mario Brothers 3, oh. and then in Super Mario World you have the Star Road that you can use. But I've beaten both of those games in under a half hour. Right. Actually, I don't know if I've ever timed myself with... How do we... Does that platform move back and forth? It must move back and forth, and I just wasn't patient enough. Um, but anyways... <laughs> I've never actually timed myself, but about a half hour sounds right for Super Mario World. And then the deepest sword game. It was it's like a speed running game. It's a very short game. It's one of those like physics challenge games like Bennett Bennett Foddy. Getting over it with Bennett Foddy, kinda like that, but a lot less aggravating, you know? where your first playthrough takes forever, but then once you have a, the hang of the game, you can actually get through it relatively quickly. It's one of those styles games, so I wouldn't say it's meant to take any longer than, you know, whatever. This one, okay, this is the one that just stays put. That's a safe one. This one spins, goes up and down, so I need to wait for it to come back up now. And this one, I think I need to wait for? No, okay. Another one that goes up and down. Got this asshole. This one, I think we just need to wait for. I'd love to grab that box of Scooby Snacks. Where is it? There it is. I'm Alive is like some mix of Resident Evil 4 and Uncharted type game. I, mean, I love Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3. I'm not a huge fan of 4. Granted, I've never played the remake. I think I'd probably like it. I've never finished Resident Evil 4 either, to be fair. Like, if I put more time into it, I think I'd probably like it more. But I don't like the extra action focus compared to 1, 2, and 3. And the control scheme, at least on PS2, is just kind of not great. So for that reason, I much prefer 1, 2, and 3. But Uncharted's a lot of fun, though. At least one. I've never actually played the other ones. Dude, co op five and six at some point? Yeah. I mean, in like four years when we get through all the Baldur's Gates games and whatnot, man, I'm down. I should have beaten Resident Evil 3 by then. Or, sorry, Resident Evil 4 by then. Four to ten years? Yeah. There's the warp point. Now we just need a save point, I guess. Oh, you're a dick. Fish. How? <laughs> How have I mistimed that every time? Right. 
Is it just like, okay, you know what? Just jump. I feel like, I feel like they're gonna be necessary for some reason though. They're definitely necessary to get up top there, but do we need to go up top? I guess that's what I don't know. Oh, when the shipwreck leads to the other side of the ship. Okay. We need to go to the other side? Look, game, I just want a save point now. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've had my fill of Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights today. No go? No go. Okay. Shit. I'm gonna give this like one or two more tries. If it still doesn't work, we're just gonna use the teleport point that we got. We go back to a save zone, a safe zone, and then just go there and save. Yeah, it seems almost like if we're able to go up all of these without dying to the stupid fish. And we just save ourselves a trip around the ship, maybe? <laughs> and collect a crap ton of Scooby Snacks along the way, which is nice, because... There's a door up here that's going to require them. No! We were so close. Okay. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to die. Whatever. All right. We're going to leave. I think the warp zone's down here. Oh, crap. We need you. I was confusing it with the next section already. It depends. Are we just talking the botters? Are we just talking the Baldur's Gate games, or are we talking Baldur's Gate and the uh, the other ones that I can't remember the name of ever by Larian Studios? Divine Divinity. Divinity Original Sin, that's what it's called. Right. Both? Yeah, if we're talking both, it's going to take a while. I think... Uh, how long have we been playing Baldur's Gate 1 for? And now we have the DLC. I mean, at least Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't have any DLC. I don't think there's DLC for Divinity, right? I could be wrong, but I don't think there is. Okay, we're just going to go back to the Mystery Machine. And I just need to remember that we're doing a Ghast by the Mast <laughs> is the section we're in. It's going to be hard for me to remember. But I'm going to try. I wonder what the speedrun is like to doing your first speedrun less than 48 hours. That's, in my opinion, a good thing. That just means the game's accessible to me, you know? That's what it sounds like. Seventy-one percent. We only made it... Well, that's probably our percentage before we saved. God, the load... Or not the load, the save thingy takes so long to... Hold on, if we go back to the menu, it'll probably tell us how far we are there. Um, but yeah, we started at like 40 some percent. My goal is still to finish next week, regardless. If I have to go a little over next week, I'm willing to do it. But I'm hoping to finish it in a reasonable amount of time so we can start the next game. 72%. So we're, we're about three quarters of the way there. It definitely slowed down a lot this time because I was searching for where to freaking go for the first like hour, hour and a half or whatever. But like... Yeah, <laughs> definitely slowed crap down. I was lost, lost. Thank God for the internet, man. I never would have figured it out. First run wasn't great, of course. Like, nearly 30 minutes slower than the record at the time. Yeah, well, I mean, that's to be expected, right? Nobody picks up a game for their first time and is instantly a master of it, you know? Even the kid that beat Tetris, I'm sure, sucked at it when he first picked it up.
Anyways, uh, let's switch over to this view here. So we can go ahead and decide what we're going to be playing after we finish Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Freaks. So hopefully next week, if not next week, then the week after, we will be doing... We're on the right sheet. So for anybody who hasn't seen before, this is the uh, sheet that has all of everybody's votes and everything on it. I click this little pick a number button here, a random number pops up over here, and that causes one of these games to highlight. Whichever game highlights is the game we play, but the first one is always just an example. So in this case, it is something. Takes a second to load. Uh, in this case, it would have been Resident Evil 4, Speak of the Devil. Uh, but again, just an example. So I'm going to click it off. I'm going to double check and make sure... I have all of the votes in that matter. Do I have Metal Gear Solid 4 on here? I know I want to play it eventually, but I don't think I own that one. I do not, so I'll just keep that one in the queue for later. I mean, I guess I can go ahead and add it, and then... Metal Gear Solid 4. Platform and everything to be determined. One vote, and then just false. We're not rolling on it right now. Okay. Still can't believe he beat Tetris. I know, man. It's insane, isn't it? Good on that kid, though. And he's what? Like, I forget how old he is. He's not that old, though. He's a young kid. But got to the point to where the game just couldn't keep up with him. Just crashed. Died. You know? <laughs> it's insane. But really, really cool. Good on him. I wish I was that good at Tetris, but not putting the time in for it. Anyways, so we're going to click the button again. Whichever number pops up is the game we will actually be starting after Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights for our Wednesday games. It is... I still need a drum roll sound effect. Dark Cloud. Hey, okay. Not one of the highest voted games, but I'm down for that, man. I've been wanting to play the Dark Cloud series for... I don't know, since I was a teenager? And just never got around to it? So now is as good at a time as ever, I guess. And at 36 and a half hours, it's kind of like middle of the road, you know, not super long, not super short. Surprising that we didn't get like Mass Effect with 209 votes here or Resident Evil 4 again with 254 votes. You know, one of the big games. Jack 2 with 216. <laughs> but dude, still. You should make one of these. It's handy if you're talking about the spreadsheet. I just use this for the... For streaming for actual games that like like for tracking for myself what i've played and whatnot i used to use a spreadsheet but i found it got a little bit too annoying to constantly keep it updated um it's nice because i can add whatever functionality i want to it but what i actually use now is this i use infinite backlog the only thing infinite backlog is missing in my opinion is a button to like randomly pick a game to play that's something that i really do wish it had but it automatically grabs all my games from steam and that's the platform that i had i struggled to constantly update on the the spreadsheet i did i wrote a little bit of code that could take all of the entries from one spreadsheet because i would just export everything from steam paste it into a spreadsheet and then run a little piece of code that would take everything from there copy it over to the master list uh, excluding any duplicates right and like that worked for a while but after a bit everything just got it just got to be too much this automatically imports everything from steam for me um and then whenever i get a new game for like ps2 or playstation 5 or switch xbox whatever i just put it in here those ones in myself and uh, track whether i beat it what i rate it all that kind of crap uh, really cool website i love it but I do hope one of these days they add a little button somewhere to randomly pick a game to play for whenever I want to do that sort of stuff. But generally speaking, as far as the stream is concerned, yeah, I use this. This is a full list of every PlayStation 2 game that was released in North America. There's about 1,801 of them uh, that I can find. That's according to Redump. I use the, the Redump list to check... All of them <laughs> and uh i was able to find 1801 unique games so not counting like you know red box versus black box special editions etc um then i have whether i own them or not whether i've streamed them or not those are the blue ones the red ones are ones that i can't stream at the moment for one reason or another the gold ones are ones that i finished on stream 
And then I have a separate spreadsheet just for games that I plan on completing, uh, preferably on stream at some point. And that's, uh, that's this one here. And then I have this little handy thing, which helps us pick random games to play whenever we play PS2 games. So all of this data is just imported from the redump set, and I can filter it from different things. Like if I want to replay a game for some reason, I can click owned and finished. And then once it updates, because of the way it works, it has to do a couple iterations. Um, so it takes a second to load. But once it's done loading, eventually, yeah, it'll start popping up with all of the games down here that are owned and finished, wherever they are. Oh, uh, do those ones not have votes? They must not have votes. Oh, wait, they do. Alien Hominid. where it starts. Wait, it's saying zero. Oh, because, eh, of course, I didn't turn streamed on. That's why, because I finished them all in stream, so all three of them need to be on for, for that to work. But if I wanted to replay a game I already beat, I could toggle all three of those, and then it would, there we go automatically highlight them for me, whatever votes they are. And then I can toggle and it'd randomly pick one. If I want to have tags, so like if I only care about games that I originally rated want to finish, I can put that in and it uses the first impression as kind of like a tag list. And it will, again, once it's done loading, filter out all the ones that are like backlog, meh, whatever, eventually said the spreadsheet's kind of slow it also supports like multiple tags and whatnot honestly i really like it the only downside is how slow it is but other than that it works really nice and that's how i decide what games we're going to be playing on uh the ps2 nights and whatnot but yeah okay dark cloud gonna make a note on here so that i don't forget and then bcd dark cloud next game to be and there we go. So now I just got to remember to dig that out of my storage box. That way, if we finish Scooby Doo Night of 100 Frights in time next week, we can start up Dark Cloud. I don't want a randomizer for this type of thing where you can select what genres and maybe some other qualifier that I feel like playing and have it randomly pick a game from those. That's how my old master list one worked. Because um, when I was importing all of the data from Steam, it had like whatever genres were listed as well uh, included with the, the data that I was exporting. And then all of the console games that I added, I just had to put in my own, um, whatchamacallit, own genre for it. And then I had the same sort of tag system that I'm using here. So if I wanted to play either, you know, an RPG or a uh, FPS, then I could type in those two tags and it would filter out everything that wasn't an RPG or FPS or whatever. And then I could just click the toggle button to get a random game. Like I said, it works pretty well. The only downside is it's slow. The only reason why it's so slow, though, is because of the, the vote thing. Because with the way that the votes work, it has to do iterative calculations. Um, it's a little bit hidden here. Oh. Oh. oh, this way? Back this way? There we go. Because this is like the true votes, but because I'm now only counting games that um, have votes, because every game gets one free vote... So I'm putting more of a focus on stuff that the users, or not the users, the viewers have voted on. So it has to do some iterative calculations. And then there's just a lot of different checks to see, you know, <laughs> what's checked, what isn't checked. I'm sure there's some optimization that could be done there. And if you did it with just the tag system and whether it was played or not, you could do it a lot quicker. It would also be a lot faster if instead of importing the data from one sheet to another, there or grabbing the data from one sheet into another there if I just had a button up here to do it, but I didn't want to cross the two things in case I accidentally screw something up, so I have it all on a different sheet. Um, it doesn't take very long to make, and it is very handy. The only hard part is constantly keeping it updated with all the games you own. That's why I stopped doing it. Um, <laughs> hopefully, again, fingers crossed, hopefully one of these days, uh, Infinite Backlog adds a a button for it because like they do have buttons for genres right so if i wanted to look at just games that i have started but not finished um and that were platformers 
then I can do that, right? And like, it'll filter that. And then if I wanted to, I could filter by platform or whatever as well. The only downside is, is there's no just random button. If they just added a select random button, then it would be perfect. But sadly, there's not. So <laughs> one day, it's on the uh, the request page for the website though. So it's something they may do at some point uh, sooner or later. Who knows? But yeah. Anyways, guys. I may have like seven Anubis eggs now. That's insane, my guy. What do you need that many? I know they're like good crafters or whatever for Pow World, but like seven seems excessive, dude. <laughs> ah. All right. My head hurts. I'm tired as hell. I'm starting to get hungry. We're going to call it there. I'll be back tomorrow night to play Baldur's Gate 1 Siege of Dragon Spear, Enhanced Edition, with my brother. Uh, we're continuing our playthrough of that, slowly making progress, maybe. <laughs> we kind of hit a bit of a wall. We seem to be a bit underleveled, so it's a bit of a struggle. But we're going to continue trying to make progress in that game tomorrow. And then Friday night, I should be back with another PS2 game, so... We're beating it tomorrow? That's not happening. Going for best skills. Ah, okay. Well, good luck on you there. Like the sub-skill things? Yeah, I get what you're saying, but like I said, good luck. Reading is a pain in the ass because of how long cake takes to make and everything. So, I wish you luck with your endeavors, my guy. Optijack, you as well. <laughs> I wish you luck with your endeavors because that, uh, that seems unlikely, but sure. Are you going to stream tomorrow? Optijack's mentioned maybe streaming the game along with me, but... I don't know if he ever got around to actually getting that set up or not. You might. I said, go for it, my guy. I think you should stream more often in general. It'd be kind of hard for you to do, like, on a regular schedule, though, I feel like. Between children and how late you work and all that shit, but... Need to test my audio levels? That takes, like, 30 seconds, man. And just make sure your voice isn't going into the red. It's somewhere comfortably in the yellow, right? And then you want the game audio to be, like, 10 decibels lower at least but not, like, too low. Generally, for game audio, I shoot for around 30 to 25, negative 30 to negative 25 on OBS, and then for voice, I shoot for between, like, negative 20 to negative 10. All right, so as long as you have, like, your audio levels in there, it should sound decent enough, man, to be honest, but whatever. Need to test my audio levels. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming and hanging out. I do appreciate you all. I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hey. hey I'm, I'm hoping the actual game looks a bit better than the pre-render cutscenes there. I'm thinking that's just like a compression issue. Because it didn't look so great. But hopefully the actual game looks looks a bit better here. <laughs>